What's going on, guys? It's your boy, S-C-A-R. And uh, yo, man, after the 20th episode, we realized how much love like you guys give on the comment section. Like, we haven't... We haven't given you guys uh, your, your your shine yet, and and giving you guys your your props for for always supporting the show, and uh, it's getting bigger and bigger just because of you. We just wanted to make a special mention of a couple of you guys, and uh, just to show and, and appreciate you. Um, yeah, here's the mainstay, Doreen Koke. So she's like wonderful. SCA, uh, you have always loved and defended women in your industry. Thank you for showing love to Amanka Brown. You stood by Sasa Claus, and she was insulted back then. Big up to you, Scar. Thank you, Doreen, and thank you so much for always watching the show. I always see like your name on, on the comments as well. Uh, here's another one about our interview with uh, Miss Amanka Breezy. Uh, such an entertaining interview. Uh, love your confidence, Amante, and your infectious laugh. You've gained a fan in me. You are my friend now in my head. Bereka Mossad. I think that interview with Amante had mixed reactions from the women and mixed reactions from, from like the men. The men... The men want to find her. <laughs> and the women are like, you go, girl. So um, we, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll have another one here from the 20th edition uh, from Podi Somudira, uh, 7229. She says, thank you to the people you keep bringing on. Um, thank you for the people you keep bringing on. Something to consider is to let the guests flow with our answers and ideas without much interruption. We need to talk about this shit. This thing is a conversation, guys. Um, these are some people that I never thought I'd be able to to talk to about like what they do. Um, we try to make the, the conversation as generic as possible. I don't want it to be an interrogation. And I start saying, oh, so where were you born? Uh, who do you love? Who did you... Nah, you won't be able to get them to, to relax and have a good time. So I do all of that so that it's a conversation. It's how people sound when they're talking. So, but I will check myself. And I'm playing. Uh, here's another one about the interview we had with Sharon Matala. Uh, this is from Masego Marua Khomu, uh, Marua Khomu, 1933. She says, uh, a great interview as always. I didn't know you broke the heartbreaking Kronberg uh, former employee story at Trafficking. You are a great journalist, Sharon. Your stories are always fire. And uh, another one uh, from Isaac Nkoba. A mainstay. Yo, shout out, Isaac. Uh, I wrote about how horrible newspaper reporting is lately. And I'm so glad Sharon agrees with me. I think he's a student. Um, and here's another one from Chub Heights. Hey, Chabito. The Heights Man Network, 9835. You think you can hide? We know it's you. And this is about the, the Ben T uh, interview. He's like, dope, dope, dope. Very dope episode. Always got the craziest love for Ben T. Uh, another one from Official Tiamo. Sky's drunk. Anyway, nice interview. I look up to Ben T anytime. <laughs> What's up, bartender? Uh, oh, Lord. Um, these are more Ben T ones. Um, where's the other one? And Oh, this is one for Cabello Mohue, our brother from uh, Culture Spears. They're traveling everywhere right now, man. Shout out to them. And uh, this one is from Andile Mauke. Are KB is an incredibly amazing storyteller, genuine and humble. The whole time watching this was just very emotional. Sky and local corner, you are up to something. God be with you, gents. And uh, this is from uh, Olero. Olero. Yeah. Traditional music is the only genre that can put Botswana at global stage. We have to regroup and invest into it. Um, what am I missing? Oh, Lord. Here's my Sero Murakomo again. I, wasn't she the same one who said that? Masero, are you fighting me again? And she's like, one problem here at this podcast, because every week we think best episode ever. Following week, why? It's another fire guest. And it's also now best episode ever. Shout out to the entire team behind the podcast. Big up to the guys, man, all the time. We know. Ah, uh, gosh. KB, another message for Cabello Moe. And uh, no, this is still Masego. Masego, what's 
Um, here's one from uh, Podcast Estrata. Thanks for bringing a traditional pudi amongst other pudis. Um, the epitome of Setswana traditional music. I think Ubu Akakabelo. This one for Giselle goes, the best interview ever. I feel like she's the big sister everyone needs. Wise and loads of fun. Love you, Giselle. This is from uh, Masero1933. And uh, yeah, another one for Giselle uh, from Alpha and Change. But when Giselle is so incredible, this is by far the best I've ever watched. I think that's all we got. Should I do more? Should I do more? Okay. All right, here's another one from uh, Mbulo Kimanake. Oh, Mbulu Kimanake. That is, yeah, talk spacing is hard for all of us guys, all right? Um, this is about the Diramuloi interview. These are some soccer lovers. Uh, Scott did his research. He may not be an analyst or guru, but he did try to get all the phases of Diran's career in the conversation. Um, that's also a shout out to our producer, uh, Miss Billy uh, Beleme, Mili Beleme, uh, Billy Beleme. Uh, and uh, yeah, she, it's yeah, it's bartender, it's bartender. It, it, it got us all nice. Um, I think, yeah, this one is from Jack Butuku. Oh, <laughs> calculation. Um, he's th this one was after we did our very first episode uh, with Eric Ramko. He says that's a legend right there, Eric Ramko. Big ups, guys, on the podcast. This is surely going to be the best of the best, guys. Thank you all for all of the support that you give. This is just us, you know, showing you that we're actually paying attention to what you do uh, sent to us. It's not like this is just us alone. We're all in this together. This is BW royalty that we bring around here. And we love it if you guys are able to get the story straight forward. And uh, yeah, let's go on with the show. Different identities. Food podcast with BSCAR. Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, BW and the rest of the world. Welcome to the 21st episode of the Cast. I'm your host, Scar, a.k.a. S-C-A-R, however you want to call it. And uh, we're coming at you from Staywell Hotels right here in uh, Mooditane. Okay, and uh, this is where you can come out and hang out. Uh, we're here every other week. Who knows? You might even run into you, man. There's a pool and all downstairs. Not out in your mouth. It's a public school, but you know. You know, pull is a pool, man. So come down and, and have some fun. Uh, but today, yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to definitely be a good one. Uh, we have uh, an international award-winning recording and performing hip-hop artist uh, who has worked with international recording labels such as Sony Music Africa, Universal Music Out South Africa. He's an independent filmmaker now. Uh, he's always been a marketer. He's a dynamic, creative industry entrepreneur who is passionate about many aspects and areas of life beyond just art. And I really think this nigga's a nerd. In the <laughs> house, we are joined by Rame Banti, a.k.a. Zeus Doos. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, Papa? How are you? Chilling. You are, man. man. Super nerd. Great intro. Because <laughs> Thank I, I think you. every single time I try to explain to people how much of a nerd you are, I always <laughs> think about the time back in the day when they, where you skipped like two forms or something it wasn't two it's just one <laughs> but about two no it wasn't eh? two i went from the end of form three to beginning of form five basically hey. yeah yeah <laughs> damn dog but yo thank you so so much for joining us and uh i i thank i, I get me on the on the um, the, the the timelines and stuff yeah but you've been around the country yeah and you guys have been putting in some work with this mindset change sure um stuff that you know has got everyone talking yeah. positive and negative reasons <laughs> how was your involvement with all of this sure stuff? um well they reached out to me to say there's a, a road show um and over and above just bringing musical performance um you know bringing in you know conversation that speaks to a lot of that subject matter you know it's near and dear mm -hmm. um to me you know i think it's it's been for most of my life you know like um she's from home you know yeah. it's it's something that uh, is very key in terms of you know how how i try view life mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it's great i think to see finally you know 
us embracing the importance of soft skills you know mm. i say soft skills you know with some caution because we constantly um underrate them i think even when we phrase it like that you yeah. know but um, a soft skill. A, a. you know but typically you find where you know a lot of the interventions we want to put into place Gore nationally, you know, you know, personally, yeah. um, struggle simply because of what we still lack in these areas, you know, and yeah, it's it's a, a journey, Ellen Gore. I still embark on, you know, yeah. still trying to grow in, and um, it's wonderful to see the country embrace that, you know. Definitely, um, for for those who are skeptical, yeah, um, because <laughs> there's there's a gang load of them. Sure. I, I had the opportunity of working with the with the Minister of Presidential Affairs, sure, um, t- towards the beginning of you know the project that thing mm. i didn't know how, where it was gonna go yeah you know sometimes i don't be asking too many questions <laughs> man it's like all right cool we're doing this <laughs> we're doing this for mulepolole at the time mm. so with for, for those who don't know what it is i just want to get it out of the way first because you you have such a full life so i'm trying to sure. get this one out of the way quickly yeah do you think like any of this is is is, is going to make any type of change because you as a creative have has seen how frustrating it can be yeah um, f- being from Botswana, a young person from Botswana, everyone yeah. is always telling you, well, why don't you go back to Joburg mm. and go do your work there? Yeah. Do you see anything coming out of this whole thing? You know, my first major thing that um, I appreciated, I think, when getting to see some of the documentation behind the campaign, yeah. you know, um, as part of, you know, taking in the brief and orientation, was the fact that, you know, government um, itself you know, is self-reflecting, you know, and I think that's something that I hope, you know, comes out in, you know, the waves of uh, communication and rollouts that will come out over um, what has been billed as the next three years, you know, as part of this campaign, you know. Okay. Um, Because I think we all understand what, like, it's it's not easy to try and change our mindset, let let alone nationally, Mm. you know. Um, But I think more than anything else, it has to be an element of, you know, buy in and trust that the public sees, you know, coming from, you know, highest office in the land where the campaign comes from down to others, you know, in terms of line ministries and, you know, departments and the like, you know, um, which is always the the challenge, I think, when it comes to, you know, uh, um, cascading information, Mm. you know, and I think also being open to to feedback from bottom up, you know, instead of just having top down kind of approaches, you know. So if if um, a lot of that, I think, is is done with with, uh, you know, authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't help but see, you know, a, a, an entire kind of buy-in that goes from public sector to private sector to even CSOs, mm-hmm. you know, because I think if you've dealt with all of these different spaces like some of us, mm-hmm. you'll start to see where, you know, some of the same problems plague us. You mm-hmm. know, it's yeah. not as much as we like to complain about, you know, bad service in the public sector, for instance, yeah. it's prevalent in the private sector too. Yeah. You know, it's prevalent in, in CSOs, you know, yeah. so it kind of says there is something wrong with just our standards of excellence and approach to things, you know. Definitely. Um, because you, this is, because I know you wouldn't just buy into it yeah. if, if it wasn't something that you, you thought was real. Sure. Um, and a lot of, you know, get like about now and only die, we get okay, no sure. <laughs> Maybe you know something is gonna happen because we see an election year. Sure. Um, and we're thinking our guys are trying to throw you know get that ducks in a row. Sure. We went around the country. Can you give us a little bit of what you saw? Yeah. Um, some of the feedback wow. from, from from young people across the country. Do you know? And everyone else. I get it. This is not yes. for young people. Oh, exactly. About all the Exactly. Mm. Look, first and foremost, it was nice to see the issues saying you know, we're constantly ventilating, moody coning, you know, on social media timelines. Yeah. Given you know. Uh, um, a serious platform nationally because we were traveling with RB2, mm-hmm. you know, so these conversations were being aired out um, and broadcast across the country, okay. you know, and um, a lot of, one of the, the, the things I liked was first and foremost, it wasn't just about, you know, another road show, Yamo Zobo Zobo, making a lot of noise on stage, um, you know, without any substance, you yeah. know, there were elements, for instance, like uh, a panel discussion mm-hmm. that was, um, 
led by the youth engagement lead um Rikaini Disepo and you know he'd give a platform to a lot of the progressive young people from those areas okay. you know to share what they're doing you know um mm. so it's not just a question of looking at the challenges and problems but seeing the solutions they long gore you know Botswana are already championing themselves you know yeah. um and sometimes if, if not most times uh, giving direction you know to uh, uh, public sector leaders to private sector leaders you know um i think for me it was nice to see uh, 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 citizens put at the forefront in terms of a solution you know even yeah. in terms of how um you know they're looking at cascading this across the regions you know bomolaudi du khosi had been oriented um oriented before yeah. um they were a big part of you know setting this all up you know um rolling it out and also owning it going forward mm -hmm. you know so i really do hope for you know citizens you know uh, young people their organizations use these focal points mm. you know and and um get them to really champion the cause the way that they're supposed to you know Definitely. um on a creative side i must say it was a real joy mm. because uh i i didn't leave with dancers and backing vocalists or instrumentalists yeah. so i asked for okay can we reach out to different performers across the areas um with some assistance from the mysec office yeah you know and you know in some areas people reached out already when i put out some calls in you know a couple of groups still or gates or have creatives nationally yeah you know and it was really mind blowing to wow. see some of the talent i was able to link up with um yeah. you know um if you know me and my music i love guitarists yeah you yeah. know so um oh, <laughs> listen there's so oh. many of them. yeah i mean <laughs> look at how i used to play with g just yeah. g for the longest time with the unplugged set you know g's all the way in thailand yeah yeah, yeah you know incredible shout him out yeah. uh, zuzi way as well you know yeah. um, no, no, like yes <laughs> yes you know so it's it's incredible to see yeah. the brilliance that i exported through an individual like him yeah you know so um i i love what serrati has done in terms of packaging the four string yeah you know i've talked about how i i see so much power in that you know mm. so i was looking for those types of guys i worked with uh guys like rick mm -hmm. go um nata mm -hmm. you know um alongside a young guy called hitcha mm -hmm. you know who's doing backing vocalist a bit of a dancer um goma wungi was dread x you yeah, know dread x. Uh, yes yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, um I, I got to link with um uh, kalahari prince mm -hmm. go, 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 go Kang, okay you know um uh, magda cam and uh, ace blanco and hanzi wow. uh jeez uh, I, I, I so Gwambi. I remember the names of the top. Yeah, like I mean, mm. come on, these these are some no, of them. The engagement is that. Yeah, some yeah. of them are like really, really uh, a bright talent. Also in the hip hop scene, because I mean, with guys like Ace Blanco and Marta Cam, I was looking out for them after seeing the them uh, blow up virally with their joint with yeah. Health as Wealth. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so Gwambi and uh, uh, a Day Off City. You yeah. know, I love what they did with the joint. Yeah, you know. Well. Yes. Yeah. It, it was crazy to see all of that happen while I was on the road. They're out of towners, but what about them? Uh, Bako joining, they're based in Mecca. You know. What's with this diamond? <laughs> Listen, man. Like I mean, I talked about it when we were in Mecca. What you know, as we speak about um, shifting mindsets. Yeah. And using, I mean, there were different thematic areas for different locations, including yeah. things like using natural resources. Yeah. You know, around using uh, um, culture. Yeah. You know, and I was saying, even when we look at popular culture, you know, yeah. a place like joining it shouldn't be underestimated what their hip hop culture is very very rich you know they made us good you know, yeah exactly i mean i literally gave a whole list of of their mcs i mean from bo illustrate and ming eq and them aura, aura of King course ming, you know diablo Apollo. also grew up there you know what i mean there's there's a whole Gabby. you know and then a whole other generation i mean uh um civil night you know what i mean uh what you might call it sure. a faded gang half a faded gang faded pretty gang. much right Bala like, Blanco, <laughs> you yeah. see all of them Ski. in fact you know what i mean Ooh. uh so so there's a Money whole something to, to look at yeah. exactly you know Money and people used to be like that too 
uh, to some extent as you well. know and and even with other sub genres i mean with uh, maroc i always talk about how mm-hmm. pique for instance mau yeah. you know those places and what they mean for for such cultures you know yeah. and such genres you know and i mean i think how we we need to figure out what it means to build value chains around these sub genres and cultures to export them to around the world you know that's where mindset change should be at guys we hope word Hore, Ota, because we're not all cynical about like ideas that bring Botswana forward and stuff you yeah know? um we, we just have seen certain things be used as like a, a oh, yeah. carrot at the end of a stick oh yeah to get us to do certain things oh you know, yeah like, yeah for like with some ministry <laughs> oh yeah so that people can like give us a messaging that we really didn't come there for you know i i always say at this point i feel like you know and this goes to everybody you know from citizens to activists you know consumers um Jeez, regulators, you know, yeah. everybody in the stakeholder uh, landscape, you know, we really must always be moving to to push policy forward. Yeah. And if if all system policy, yes, you know, yeah. if if whether it's moving it forward, if it means uh, um, you know reshaping it and yeah. you know bringing in uh, uh, reforms, you know, we have to. Because That's what I thought mindset change was really, you know, I thought it was trying to get young people. Uh, to look at what already exists. Yeah. Well, I want to get around. let's say your pepper, whatever um I is pads, sure. whatever is existing there. Yeah. About getting them to be more proactive about going to check out what those things are. Yeah. And how do we how can this benefit me? And then we teach them or instead of sitting at home yeah. expecting someone to come at you and give you a job. Yeah. You can actually go there and knock on these doors yourself. So that's what yeah. I thought we were trying to change about it. Th- that's part of the conversation. I mean, there's so many levels to it. But yeah, first yeah. and foremost, in terms of um, seeing opportunity, you know, and, you know, latching onto opportunity before we reject um, See, what's yeah, out yeah. there, you yeah. know, because yeah. the reality, and I appreciated one young lady who was in a panel, I think, who was saying how, you know, we've come to a point where, you know, some of us are so fatigued. We we don't even believe that uh, these programs can work for us. We only, mm. we think that they're only for so and so with a surname. Mm. You know, um, but the but the truth sometimes is you can't even know until you try. Yeah. You know, and there are people who've thrown their names in the ring and have uh, uh, come out tops. You know what I mean? Yeah. So instead of um, you know giving up and feeling like oh, okay we're boxed out you yeah. know maybe let's put our, our names into to the ring first yeah you know um and including try. even and try yeah. and including those in the the system and in decision making uh, spaces i mean they speak for instance or look you know why does it seem we don't always have a positive response to um you know proactive Botswana to Botswana by you know what i mean and <laughs> um, you know uh, do we are we more eager to support people from outside you know uh uh, or our own citizens, you know, and these are questions then or we know we've had even of our own government. Mm-hmm. Or like I say, when we look at the kind of uh, self-reflection that is in uh, um, the documentation, or I do hope, you know, comes out more and more in the rollouts that go out to the public, yeah. you know, I think, you know, will really help move the needle in terms of not just how, you know, private sector moves, but public sector moves too, you know, no doubt. and civil society. I've I've interviewed you before yeah. um in in well it was at that other spot <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't really get into a lot of it but like as, as far as your upbringing I, I I think I have an idea you was born in Sorowe uh Mahalap, Mahalap. Yeah. I, and you are this Botswana traveler yeah please break but it down but central <laughs> I mean the thing is I've I've like Central through and through in hey, terms of where my folks um, from Soroe, my mom, and then yeah. pops from Tabala, mm. um, born in Mahalape. Um, yeah, pretty <laughs> much like. Tell us where you went. That's. <laughs> Because everyone can say, oh, this is a good guy. I can tell you yeah. you were you on the way past. Or, uh, Which or, ones did you go to? Like the schools and the... the, the you mean this, during this past trip? No, when you were going to school. I'm oh, during school. Like oh, okay. Yeah. School, um, school was a bit more complex because my mom was a school head back yeah. then. So um, she'd be posted. Like uh, Mahalape was Jabari. Mm-hmm. That's when she was working there. That's where I was born. And then um, I moved, we moved to Malapole. 
yeah. right as I was about to start school yeah. and then ended up starting school go um, uh, shepherd no go go my room weather yes and yeah, that's my labs yeah, yeah. Was, uh, from there until like standard 3 standard 3 we moved to gabs mm. that's when i went to the cd um until standard 6 actually fun fact mom mono was the the school head at the time that's Ma- like um foster's yes, grandmother yes exactly foster juliana yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah disciplinarian yeah, of note yeah. and then um i went to rainbow standard so 7 basically from like- there yeah yeah like I, i really i don't i don't lie for instance when i say on that item on um on that the joint that i've i've seen G-spot. school yeah on g-spot's joint that yeah. i've been a public school i've been a private school i've seen yeah. both sides yeah 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 because i'm sure <laughs> i was sitting there like a like they are in the <laughs> no, like the water flash on there no, straight up man like so, yeah so well had like rainbow that's where you ended up finishing to your five yes five. yeah exactly that's where you were skipping status can you tell some of us yeah. who always wished nerga to labo the standard yeah <laughs> How did you do it? No, it's just well, it was pretty much part of the system Nele, back then. Nele, secret, secondary or was secondary, it? yeah. L- I think they figured out how essentially form 5 was a revision year. Mm-hmm. So if you um were up to date in terms of your syllabus year by year, you know, by the time you finish form 4, yeah. um or rather by the time you you finished form 3, yeah. you could essentially go into form 5 you know take on a bit of new subject matter and <laughs> talk yeah about it like it's easy though <laughs> I mean, because they're looking at you they want you to skip a whole year pretty much yeah you don't think like that messed with like your social development no, in any not way? at all not at all like i mean it got you into like older rooms yeah to some age. extent yeah yeah to some extent you know which i think might have helped um my ch- maturity at least academically yeah. in some ways you know what i mean definitely yeah. no yeah. but i still maintain <laughs> okay you're the last born of four siblings sure um you have two brothers and one sister yeah and when you were growing up like <laughs> no i mean how is it being a last born you know th- as much as early on yeah there's there's a lot of ruckus and this that you know trying to find your voice cutting through a lot of older voices you yeah. know um there's also a lot of joy in terms of protection that yeah. you get from them a lot of learning that you get from them you know so yeah it's it's great um yeah <laughs> hey, no i feel you because i want to get into I, i've heard you talk about how your your bro lefika yeah is was the one who was hip-hop inclined sure and how did he get you to, into hip-hop or sure did you find him listening to it how did yeah i mean out? it was really just you know feeding off of the culture off of what he was consuming um in fact what all my my siblings and my parents were consuming in mm-hmm. different ways because as much as i grew up loving hip-hop um you know i was listening to a lot of r&b because of my sister's influence mm-hmm. a lot of dancehall because of my other brother's influence yeah, man. you know yeah <laughs> um you know it, in fact he'd even stretched to like straight out reggae mm-hmm. you know so i think it it helped yeah, my yeah, my, oh, yeah buju yeah buju and even back like culture. going down to culture exactly yeah. burning spear burning you know spear. root stuff That's you know what i mean my dad hums when we're playing music <laughs> in the car yeah <laughs> yeah hey, <laughs> yeah Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know so so those types of influences i think um do wonders for yeah. a hip hop artist you know what i mean yeah. so yeah but definitely fix put me onto a lot like from jeez from heavy d era down to down to hip hop r&b era you know mm. like i mean even acts like bojore c you know what i mean yeah. like yeah <laughs> so i want to ask about your name rainbow um mm. because rainbow had a lot of people come out of there that did really really well as far as the entertainment space is concerned yeah um emma became yeah. miss second well that yeah miss world <laughs> somebody um, second Class, princess yeah uh, uh, the list is really really long i don't know yep. if you lungo lungo and repeat yep. also yep. who else was out there like that came out from rainbow kind of rainbow and since almond and then it just yeah. grew into its Jeez, own dj thing. kells kells was there also yes dj kells was there like i mean kells is crazy cuz we went from let's say to rainbow together pretty hey. much yeah um, <laughs> yeah. yeah and and and, and of course uh, the entrepreneurship i mean the legends barbershop move you know came yeah, yeah. Legends, yeah that's major you know i'm still trying to convince the homies to go shoot uh, an episode there <laughs> go 
Ur na listing ya. I'm putting the niggas on blast. Yeah. Yeah, it's not me, Kels. <laughs> Um, um, what was it about it? Like, oh yeah, Posibina, also oh, Rainbow. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, look, I mean, what I was think. It like over there? I think you know it. It was um, a school that was finding its its feet and kind of had enough room, I think, to you know let kids you know find themselves. Mm. You know, I don't think there was you know any traditions that were locked down yet like a culture you know, yes yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. so i think we had the chance to develop our own culture in a lot of ways yeah. you know um yeah like f- uh, f- from sports to music you know i it was one of the the first times you know coming from a public school yeah. where i felt like you know those things were given importance yeah. you know and and you know there was acknowledgement that you know if you did well in those spaces you know um you were worthy of us celebrating you and celebrating yeah. you as a school community like a you know like i mean it wasn't a dream world per se but i mean like it 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 i mean i remember for instance doing things like uh theater plays mm. you know what i mean like i remember narrating uh, a play in was a form one or standard yeah. seven or something. I remember standard seven going to Clifton mm. um, in Francistown, uh, another private school, and they used to have this uh, what is it, the cultural weekend or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I literally went there for public speaking, you know, yeah, and just yeah, to yeah. sharpen my public speaking skills. <laughs> and we were we was we were telling a chain story with other kids. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think things that just made me comfortable in expressing myself. Yeah. You know, and a lot of other kids, you know, got the chance to to do such things, you know. Yeah, so man. yeah. Is that where you d- developed your knack for music? Like um, to create no, the, music. The the music was there long before. I mean, I think I mean, yeah, it it was unleashed more because yeah. I remember like even doing things like uh talent shows and stuff when I was there. Mm-hmm. But I feel like in terms of really trying to make my own music it was more you know, late primary school, there was a stint where my brother was messing around with Cakewalk Express, Lufika. What's Cakewalk Express? It's early, early beat making software. Oh, like, <laughs> he's online making beats. <laughs> yeah, Fix. What is he doing? Like, Fix was, was making <laughs> little beats. I remember there was a friend of his who had, like, some TV show concept. Yeah. So he asked her, or she'd asked him to, like, um, put together an opening sequence in terms of the song and jingle you know so like little things like that Mm. you know kind of leading on to drafting first little skeletons Mm. but that kind of you know was a short phase and then put that away for some years but i think like mid high school more like form three odd yeah you know after getting to a point of taking on so much uh, um in the way of other people's music yeah. you know it, it came to a point where the cypher started happening and freestyle started happening and it became more about you expressing your own opinion and yeah. not just um sharing somebody's bars you know yeah. so i feel like that's that's when my my awakening came <laughs> do you remember your first rhyme ah oh, man like ah uh, <laughs> not quite i mean the first ever rhyme that i knew no not word for word but do you remember like how it came I, about i remember the essence of some of them what um, were you talking about <laughs> i mean the typical party starter mc stuff you know the welcome to my party you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that, that well, yeah, yeah those those uh, <laughs> those heavy d you know uh, hey, uh, heavy d you know jebba yeah. influence vibes you yeah. know what I mean? like that that how you feel you know what i mean that jabba you know what I mean? yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. yeah um <laughs> so those those are the early days but the first rap i remember ever learning from somebody else was um nothing but a g thing oh yeah like, uh, i love three. that one too also. yeah <laughs> that Don't one happened why. <laughs> Please, what happened? Who taught you that? No, I mean, that's the thing. I'm sitting here thinking, I had no business in Standard 3 learning that nothing but a G thing, right? Yeah, no, hey. (laughs) One, It was a different censorship time. Yeah, I guess they got us with the count. You know, it sounded like education. So back on now, because you know I'm about to fuck shit up. (laughs) Straight. So by by then now, how how then do the Yarn FMs, the talent shows, how, how does that come about? And are you doing all of this by yourself? Um, or do you have a team? I mean, like a crew of, of guys that... Yaron FM, um, the Rap Activity Jam came 
after school safe you know like mm. after we got to a point there was a time when you know after school cipher battle kind of became a thing you know i remember one time actually where people just came gathering people thought people were fighting <laughs> you know and teachers came because they wanted to break it up you yeah. know but it was a battle you know yeah um so yeah you win those and it's like okay yeah. uh, maybe you should be going to get on fm you know i remember even even my guys you know who had la yeah um a lot of my friends were there um you know they had their own scene and they had their Look own MCs and like, yeah, yeah i mean guys that. like bo, bo ob mm. um geez cab you know OB's, samba yeah, yeah. yeah. um you know cabin samba in fact it's crazy because we started rhyming basically from high school mm. you know i mean they were friends already yeah. um but later on we connected on an MCing level and yeah i got to meet other guys there there were whole battles again where yeah. there'd be a hype or okay friday so and so will be battling so and so you know do, do <laughs> um, we have a we, actually let's not go there yeah first because i, I i'm trying i'm trying to move strategically <laughs> stage here. by stage hey, i'm trying to move <laughs> stage by stage so you finally take it to the yarn fm place yeah. when when did these number one versus number two start because robin had this number one versus number yes. two thing um after the sprite rap activity jam that was after yeah that was because i only did the rap activity jam that one year that we had um we, we, we both finished in the semis yeah, yeah, I, yeah i lost to illustrate i can't remember who I think I lost to Sam. I, I won against Samba. Yeah, I won against Samba, and then I met Illustrated in the, the finals. finals. Yeah, then okay. So the yeah, the flow with me. Yeah, yeah, that dude was dangerous, God man. Damn. He was, yeah, he was on another level of MC. I don't think we were ready. Couple, what the hell was that? Taking it in room. Out of your sister's that was, witch. That was I, that was Mecca. Me. <laughs> that was Mecca, I man. Like, like yeah, world, I'm like this nigga. <laughs> no, those those dudes were studying. Um, I'm seeing from another level, I think, just like Johnny in terms Lewis. of understanding, yeah, the, the boom bap of the time, mm. you know, like, yeah. Like, that's why I say they really help move the culture forward, especially in terms of the lyricism and pen game, you know? Uh, this is why I catch you. Why do you think they didn't blow up then? No, man. <laughs> I mean, look, I think, you know, there's... Blow up inverted commas is always um, an interesting thing. But you know it's, what it's I mean, It's a combination though. of elements, right? Yeah. I mean, from them, I'd say definitely the guy who, you know, found the easiest crossover success would probably be Diablo. Yeah. But Aura was able to find great mainstream success, cutting through with, you know, a very, very raw lyricist style, which yeah. in itself is, is always a achievement, you mm. know? I think... What about um, me? Guys like Ming and EQ for me are are, are cult legends, mm. you know, to a point where, you know, they still have their fan bases, you know. So, you know, Blow Up for me, I think is... Uh, I always forget Nitro, eh? Yeah, Nitro, of course. My yeah. bad, yeah. You know, so, so if you think about the career trajectories that they've been able to build in different ways, mm. you know, I think they all found their success in different ways. I mean, Illustrator, of course, like, geez, moved literally, you know, from JSEC to Cape Town, mm. you know, moving in the underground pretty successfully for a yeah. lot of years, you know. So yeah. I, think, I think mainstream success doesn't necessarily represent everything. For real? For real, for real. So you don't do music for people to like it. And if you have the most people loving your music, doesn't that mean that you've been successful? It's look by by my most people's terms, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's the that's definition. The success. You that's do the it success. For the numbers, the woohoo, numbers. great. Yeah. But you and I know what like for instance when you talk about the greatest MC debate, yeah, you know, most people will tell you, man, the numbers don't even matter. You know yeah. what I mean? Like for me, for for the longest time, I always said Nas was the goat, yeah. even before this current I run know. that <laughs> proved it. You know, even, and even when we had our <laughs> issues, you know, I knew you were Nas guy. <laughs> you know, issues, so like, so <laughs> yeah. So so um, you know, it's it's one of those things where. It, it, it it really is about so much more yeah you know yeah but for most people they'd say it's it's your pen game it's your connection with your audience it's mm. you know it's your quality over your quantity of course if you can bring it all together have mainstream success you know be able to battle be able to to leverage your brand in other spaces and 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 hey yeah great I, yeah no that's only kendrick <laughs> Got <a little> man, <laughs> Lizzie, cool jigger i mean everybody and, and, and jigger you're like hey. the goat in terms of for most people okay mm. um i, I want to get into bonobo number one versus number two how then like did you think you were ready to actually get into a studio like 
Oh, yeah. How, how many how many rhymes had you written? Did you even know? Like, how did you know um, yeah. when you met Bofavi? Mm. Uh, or uh, yo, I could actually do something. I I really didn't. You know, I I was just I was just a young hungry MC. You know what I mean? Like I I was really that 16 year old who wanted every chance um i could to rap you know what i mean mm. like at whatever level so you know from taking up the radio station opportunity yeah um favi was with lords you yeah. know lords was a freestyle king you know lordy lords yeah Coming chilling in, in the, the car with 40, 40 bros <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, it was like, we have to go to studio, you know, you have to come check this out, you know, ski set up, tracks, mm. you know, um, back when it was still at the back, you had to go around the back of the past yard, the dogs. you know, past the dogs, <laughs> yeah. you know, and yeah, basically that's, that's where the magic started, because um, Big Duke and... Uh, Stoops dog. No, no, no. And Mo DJ were Mo. do and DJ Mo were doing the the heavy hitters mixtape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they they had a joint for me. They're like, yo, come jump on this. And basically, that was the beginning of my recording career. Actually, mm. yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. Because some of that other stuff, yeah. Yeah, go yarn FM. I think we need to shoot a documentary about this yeah. stuff. Some of the <laughs> right. stuff we just can't throw out right. there, but like, <laughs> just the, the the basis of what was going on was that right. like there was a lot of. A tool sharpening tool, like yes. steel sharpening yeah. steel. Yeah. Look, and and that thing where like, and I've seen it more more obviously um, after having experienced it myself. That thing that industry does, mm. you know, that fans do in terms of like, you know, um, when rappers come up in the same era. Yeah. How you know they they act like two kings co can coexist yeah. as as a thing and them put it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um. So there'll constantly be a bit of you know egging on a bit of like uh um, pitting up against type thing you know yeah. and it's it is what it is i think it's something that hip-hop is addicted to in some ways you know and and we fall for as well too you know in in rap egos you know i, I want to take you back there did, yeah did you think i had a problem with you i mean what i found the the biggest issue for me that started the whole thing was um when y'all went to to robin's show yeah. and number one after, versus number two yes yeah. after where well, yeah, we had that and then i remember offline you were like yo man you did the most like after the battle and everything you're like yeah. no nah, no nah, you killed me man yeah no i loved it I yeah mean, you, you you straight up said it yeah. you know and then um obviously you were already a p-side artist so ah, come on no no let's be for real like Ooh, let's be for real i remember I, I remember i remember a lot of calls were like yeah yeah p-side p-side i was like all right <laughs> no 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 cred no cred no no cred no disrespect Guys. you know but then but then the following week it, it it was like the narrative flip was like yo i killed that dude i was like nah, that, that's not what you said offline <laughs> no you know what i think i think i got touched because i think you said something about my my then girlfriend at the time <laughs> When now we're Brazil. Yeah, no. Yeah, you did low talk blows. About Jay yeah. on the track. <laughs> yeah. And she was at your school. Yeah. I'm all the way out in St. Yeah, that Joseph's was petty, College. My bad. People <laughs> are, these private kids are talking about me and media and movie. Yeah. Sure. Bafana, yeah, but media, I don't. think that was that was some weeks later. Like, you know how these things escalate back and forth, man. I don't mean that's really why I was yeah. touched. <laughs> It was because he spoke about Jay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my bad. My bad. Nah, man. But like I say, I think it becomes inevitable in a lot of ways yeah. when, you know, there's acts coming up and people, you know, see that essentially both guys are on an upward trend. You know what I mean? But I think we also fell into a situation yeah. where these older Gabs niggas yeah. had their own issues. Oh, yeah. And we just happened to be on those opposite ends of oh, the spectrum. Yeah. I think... I was being pushed to yeah, do yeah. some of these tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if when <laughs> when you never do, drop the track. No. You know what I mean? But no. there were certain things that I was feeling what were subliminals yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I remember. I mean, look, it's just it it became um a whole thing where it was like, okay, you know, you will always have to kind of like stand and defend your your turf kind of thing. Yeah. You know, um doesn't always necessarily mean going all out war. Yeah. You know, I remember even just like the most shadow boxing moments. In, yeah. Like, you know, I remember in Tumulo and Yell at one point people were feeling like, oh, that's a beef track. Yeah. It's like not necessarily, you know what I, I mean? I nearly got on that track. Yeah. <laughs> what people don't know was I was nearly on Tumulo Yeah, Nyel. that's wild. <laughs> I was over at Cab's place. Yeah, yeah. I think it was in Pretoria. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's when he was in between. Hey, exactly. Keba mantari. Tlamona na. Yeah. I know. Was it you or Keba? Yeah. Mwana mpule la orita mna bloma. Yeah. Kwara pini eka osa. Ni mwana. Yeah. <laughs> Nega. Ebiki. Ay. Yeah. Kukwaja. Ebiki va. Mwana wana I heard that track. To this day. Yeah. So I'm gonna cry. <laughs> but like. Okay. Because I really don't think. I don't know if you do understand that we. To this day. I think. Yeah. We've cut a city in half. Like a country in half. Yeah. I mean, I I get that, and that's why I and say. And there's still people who've taken on this beef. I know beyond just trust me, me and you. Trust me. <laughs> just because <laughs> that's ridiculous. Hey, Please, sh- guys, wow. Like these know. niggas. There was um. I remember there was one dude I was also working with, and we were just having a problem with each other. Yeah. This nigga just starts blasting your music. <laughs> that's weird as hell. I'm supposed man. to get into that's the weird comedy. energy. Yo. My nigga. And it's like, like <laughs> we get quickly, like, like, We were going on a trip. It wasn't like an orange trip, and yeah. he was working at OP advertising. Yeah. This motherfucker going to play your song as I'm getting in the combi. Kenzo Len at one point gets mad at me, and he's my cousin, and he goes plays for you. <laughs> but you see, with stuff like that, for me, it was always like, nah, it's it's a small industry, man. Like it's all love, you know what I mean? Nah, man. Like, I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm turned. Uh, man. Nah, man. Nah, uh, now that I know? think of it, little brother said one. Nah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, so love. this is all before you go to Monash. Yeah. Because I get it this and and circles. and through those years actually. Those, that's yeah. what I'm saying. What it lasted longer than yeah than an, an argument over you mentioning Jackie on the track. It was kind like, of thing. Yeah. Hey, where people yeah. then ran with it, yeah. and that's ex- uh, actually why I was able to like. Yeah. Pick up what was going on when Abenti and Vizo, it looked like something was going on. And then it went, and that's why I always ask them about it. It's yeah. like, it went further than it was supposed to because of the people that mm. were around them. Yeah. That this also. Is, yeah. This is why I say hip hop as a culture, I, I don't know why we do this, you know, because um, like somebody once said back in the day, you hardly hear rock and roll acts <laughs> pitted against each other like yeah, that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's only in hip hop where it's like, Nah, man, you have to pick big or pack, like yeah. you know, ride or die, Casper or AKA. One uh, has to go. You know, one has to go. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's like, my dude, I can enjoy both of them. Mm. You know, both of them have their unique talents. You know, so what yeah. do you think that is, though? More, more I think hip-hop it's or? it's the machismo of the culture. You know, yeah. the bravado of it, which yeah, I can just can just be plain old. You know, yeah. bad. You know, toxic masculine energy at times. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Especially the way the old mold. You know what I mm. mean. I mean, this is why we we talk about the need for a culture fix and the need to shift it so much. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's it's um it's it's problematic. I think just in life to not be able to acknowledge other people as well. You know what <laughs> I mean? It was hard for me to acknowledge you. <laughs> um, even though a lot of people come to us like. But you know, there's a lot of similarities between you and this dude. You know, they say they say like when you're doing shadow work that mm. um, the people you tend to feel some type of way against the most yeah. usually are are there to teach you something. You know yeah. what I mean? And there's a lot in them that reflect some of your own um, being and yeah. person that that um, makes it hard to sometimes accept. You know. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. I, I want to then get into you going to to Monash. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, did you want to go to Monash? Was it always your plan to leave the I, country? Because I'll be, you guys have been recording an album with Cab, Zeus, and Samba. Yeah, I have some of my favorite tracks in there, and like I'm saying, guys, know, man. It's because I know some of the story. Okay, yeah. Um, Hey, cut it, Ish, man. Dun, dun, right. My nigga. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, no, 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 hey, we were so okay. ahead with that. Yeah, yeah we were so ahead with that, man. That nigga's like, I am the law. Like, like Kota 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 yeah. Your ancestors, <laughs> oh, man. This is Samba in. What? Yeah, way, way, way back. I mean, I tell people what all the time, like, you know, me, for me personally, Cab and Samba are some of my favorite MCs, yeah. you know, from a whole list of my greatest MCs, you know, yeah. like I've heard these dudes since they were kids, since they were teens, you know, and yeah, they're prolific, you know, in their growth and their evolution. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's one of those pains that we haven't been able to properly release a Cab, Zeus and Samba project. That so, album, because yeah, all three of you went to SA to go to school. Yeah, and yeah, things fell apart there we never really had a management core 
you know so and then we all got lost in some of our own solo work you know I, 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 you're moving a bit too fast because i'm trying to figure out or in that situation because yeah so this is before so you did come back to the tech studios and yes. record yeah. freshly baked during holidays pretty much no no not freshly baked was um Later leaving later. tracks yeah okay uh what we recorded first was corners clubs and churches okay. that was the the unreleased project that um first singles was Connors Clubs and Churches. City. yeah uh, triple c yeah okay. <laughs> bozata ct and imagination came off of corners clubs and churches corners clubs and, and churches forensic. was the cabs with some samba project no, that was my solo Lula. project yeah, yeah. Uh, the cabs so with how did samba you close that was, chapter down guys were now just yeah. scattered all over you SA. know the crazy thing is we recorded that first even before i got the chance to record solo material we we actually raised our own money like with uh high school jobs post high school jobs yeah. You know, I was working as a filing clerk or BTC, book mm. cab uh, calling centers, boy in local at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, and local, Yeah, gang gang, you know. <laughs> and we paid for studio time at Skizos. Um and that's how we recorded Bo Mole Bahapio. Mole Bahapio. Yeah. That was that was our breakthrough joint as as a unit. <laughs> that was you know? head of his <laughs> It's ridiculous. And then um, you know, Skizo heard the work we we're doing. And that's when he was like, okay, you know, we're doing forensic records. Uh, you know, here's an offer for a deal. You know, and that's when we did Bo, um, uh, Bozata CT and the rest you of know, the album. My yeah, song. yeah, yeah. That's my Corners, song. clubs, and churches. Yeah, man. Yeah. So Nelly Mozagi Le Peleano this time he wanted them to um, be partner. Sure, in, yeah, in, to essentially partner partner, sign me, sign yeah, to sign artist. me to an artist deal so as So Favi would then be the producer? Exactly. How was the split going to work? Did you have an idea? Look, I mean, at that time, I wasn't clued up on much of, you know, the business back end. You know what I mean? It was yeah. literally finding my way through. You know, it was after that that I really started, you know, figuring the game out, um, yeah. going into Freshly Baked, you know. And it was mainly because of the frustration because I sat and waited for the album to be released. Um, but it was never released, you mm. know, even though we had two of the biggest singles, you know, ever was probably the for was, oh, a <laughs> debut artist in mm. Botswana, you know. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, Imagination made it all the way to number number one on you know countdowns to end of the yeah. year top 100 countdowns yeah. you know mm. so i was just like man let's release this let's release this and yeah um <laughs> patience ran out you Have know you never had a conversation with Mokolani? you know we've gone on to other things but yeah we've long said you know we should actually talk about uh, a re-release you know um yeah. Yeah, it would be worth it. It yeah. definitely would be worth it because I mean, I listen to some of that stuff once in a while, and it's like listening to a different me. So yeah, like, yeah <laughs> I'm sure people would appreciate it. How did you guys do uh, imagination with Stagger? Because oh, you, man. from my experience, yeah, you guys have like such a really interesting relationship. Yeah, <laughs> it's hot and it's cold. <laughs> and it can be hot now, and then tomorrow morning, oh, come on. you're well, like I these guys are ready to beat each other on fight. So man. how? how how did you guys get together yeah. to make this track? Look, I mean, you want all of it. But. To begin with, um, you know, obviously I was a very uh, a young kid, you know, like at the time, you know, uh, taking a lot of direction, you know. Um, Favi, I think, is was just a, a, a mastermind in terms of shaping that song. Mr. Charles Mutsen. Yeah, from, yeah, from the composition of it, you know, Ski, obviously, exec producing it, you know, mm. was pulling the puppet strings, you know. Um, but I think it, it gave me insight into how great songs are really well produced, mm. you know, and layer by layer, you know, um, person by person in terms of contribution, you know. I mean, geez, from, from building the chorus, mm. you know, uh, identifying a unique voice in mayhem, yeah. you know, the back and forth, you know, uh, um, the swing flow. Oh, mayhem, get him when it's bumping, baby. Yeah, you know, it was, it was so, so, so well uh, put together, yeah. you know, um, and I remember produced. exactly, yeah. you know, and I remember by the time we were done before Stagger came on, mm. you know, Ski was just like, yo, this needs that dance hall feature. And he's like, yo, <laughs> we need to call Stagger and he's not going to do the usual rap thing that he mm. does. He's going to go in his Brixton element. You yeah, know man. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's crazy because I knew Stagger from ages um, ago because of my brother, because yeah, of Ifika. Yeah. Yeah, I remember there's a legendary tape actually where I was freestyling with him when I was like 15 or 16 or something at the suites, like outside my brother's crib. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah like you know we, we just kind of grew up under his watch type of thing you yeah. know what i mean yeah. and i think when you talk about hot and cold ah, i think on. it just it, it, there was a point when <laughs> it felt like you know um you know like you know what it's like with big brothers you yeah. it's like they want to put you in little brother mode forever All the time. you know what i mean so yeah i think it was just some of the conversation especially the political <laughs> stuff which no, which I'm, had a scene different at certain points i'm always but, scared yeah, like when, but it's all love like when it really Hannibal is on twitter also it's like <laughs> Like the back and forth is just so dramatic, and then he'll call yeah, me. Yeah, but that was years ago. What's up? What's up with this dude? Come on, I get it. Sorry, I'm on now. Put on the feet. Wow, wow. I'm not getting this now. I'm going. Wow, wow. Yeah, but, um, don't miss all love, man. So, in in where, where does Gijima come in here? Yeah, Gijima comes right after the era, yeah, your Nayabu imagination and all. So no, that's when now I'm I'm going to SA. That's when I'm like, okay. Um, the album wasn't released. I gotta essentially build again and what drop an album. What was the launch about your Nia forensic records? It was launching the that was launching label. the record label, yeah. Right, cool so stuff. and the singles that we had. I mean, because it was a, a powerful stable, man. Thabo, uh, Lesh, you know. Yeah. I mean, Bodela, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, geez, I mean, crazy. We didn't even mention Get Up and Dance and Tequila because those were some of my first features before <laughs> I even had like solo Give joints. Give me t-shirts, yeah. like any time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know I got them all. Yeah, man. you know. Um, but then, then yeah. So then I go to SA Year One. Um, not long after that, yeah. that's when I met up with Don Juan and them. And then that's when, yeah, the Octave Couplet era begins. You know yeah, what I mean? Octave Couplet. Yeah, starting with with um, uh, Freshly Baked, because they had some production on Freshly Baked, but there was a couple of other people. I mean, mm-hmm. with Gijima, it was Mark Blaze, mm-hmm. a Zimbabwean dude who um, I got the plug with from Danone, a Lesotho producer who was at the same school. Mm-hmm. Um, Danone actually did um, joints like Hip Hop, I Love You, okay. Yara Proverb, you know, so... Yeah, it was it was it was a whole other era where now I'm getting into the J Sex scene and starting to run in that, you know, SA hip hop lane. But how was it? Like you do marketing and management. Yeah. Um. What was it difficult to like balance the two? Because some of yeah. us have jumped ship. Right? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It like for me, <laughs> I I didn't find it difficult because for me it was it was the joy of kind of being exposed to. You know professional industry in some ways you know mm. that showed me a lot of theory you know like mm. i remember going to um uh yfm their their um hot nine and nine i mean before hot nine and nine the battle hey. the, their rap activity jam because my first year that was one of the first things i was like okay geez for me to to figure my way out i'm gonna have to kind of do what i did in botswana yeah. so okay let me go into the rap activity jam yeah, and yeah. yeah and i mean you know just that first week i won that first week um they were sponsored by converse okay. i think uh, yeah they had a bunch of goodies that were from converse so i mean mm-hmm. as a marketing major it's interesting to connect you know the demographic and the yeah. brand and you know play some of the stuff and see it as you know um living breathing case study that yeah. i walk through you know um yeah. i remember later on going to a playstation event which had a hip-hop battle element and mm. you know just the experience of the event like on an uh, uh event management level the kind yeah. of experiential things that they were doing which i wasn't really used to in terms of events you know mm. so yeah that it, it was really cool um i've always said when when we talk about you know boring companies like 3m i was thinking dev jam you know mm. so yeah. being able to see um music industry at play yeah. and you know corporate uh, uh, brands connecting to culture you know was yeah. were eye openers you did gigs also in SA. I think yeah. you also brought us out for a gig also. Yeah, Some. yeah, I remember. Yeah, with hey. Ian Stagger. Yeah, Ian that was Stagger dope. Came out on the to, campus. Yeah, to, I forgot to the that. campus as well. Yeah. So, do you think your eventing mm. started at Monash? Is mm. that where DIY uh, do it yourself started? Yeah, hell yeah. I actually re- reserved the name in second year when I was in varsity. Damn. Yeah. Um, you still own DIY to this yeah, day. Yeah, that's what that's the vehicle I work through. We are not just Hesh, like some we're, we're, spider web company in we're, the back. We we're, we're cleaning up a lot of the <laughs> old mess when we used to ignore some of those things yeah. but yeah like that is the vehicle. Mm. Um yeah, it's 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 been a ride man. I mean, I've always said not a record label, entertainment company, you know. Yeah. Um 
And I think that worked well in terms of, you know, allowing me to explore different things from yeah. eventing to film. But yeah, the, the, the campus education was huge. Um, I, 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 I love that, you know, you actually graduated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and do you think having a degree, oh. um, you know, would you say that there are some perks in navigating the entertainment yeah. industry because um a few weeks ago we had ben t yeah and uh, he has a degree in music business and law yeah and he has been able to diversify his platform significantly mm. uh, like you yeah. did most of that before a lot of people i mean i don't yeah. want to get too personal about it because i was close to the story sure um but you know how do you think yeah um, having accreditation yeah. has helped you in your it was it's been everything because i mean first and foremost i think people you know, forget that it's not just a piece of paper, but it, it shapes how you think and how you move, mm. you know. And in an industry like ours, our value chain is very underdeveloped. We don't have a lot of managers. We don't have a lot of publicists or, you know, um, PR people, legal people, by long to speak, music industry. Yeah. You have to, to be a sole proprietor for, you know, a long time, if not most of the time, yeah. that understands those different things, you know, and... For me, BCom was exactly that. It was a bit of business law, a bit of accounting, a bit of, you know, uh, um, well, a lot of management and marketing as majors, you mm. know, statistics, you know, mm. um, things that help you understand uh, um, business, you know, in different ways. You know, it's mm. not to say you're perfect and you can do everything all by yourself. But I think even when you start to rope in people, you know, when you start to, to work with, you know, be it... Uh, um, you know, team members that are long term, be it consultants or, you know, project based people, mm -hmm. you're able to truly, you know, add value and, you know, understand value. You know? Yeah. Um, Nithani, uh, Freshly Baked is in 2008, I get it. Yeah. Um, it had back in the days. Yes. I, I want to know how the tracks were dropped. Which yeah. one did you drop first and which one came after what? Um, the very first single from Freshly Baked was Back in the Days. Wasn't that like a relief because you it had, was. had the king? Imagination, imagination was... Imagination. Yes, Imagination was literally <laughs> sitting on my... Like over me like as uh, this huge song that I had to get away from. And my, my first... told me about Pompa uh, Tzuidi Tzuidi. Yeah. Until yeah. he had all our guys. Yeah. I didn't know about that shit when I had my people until I started having other songs. Yeah. I think I had, yeah. Well, Mitchell is now still there. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's important to get another one. It's huge. And I mean, my first thing was just get away from it. Like to get away <laughs> from the song. Yeah. To not try and make the same song. Because yeah. I think there's a trick that, you know, artists sometimes fall for, which is okay. Let me just tweak the formula of that first song yeah and give you something similar you yeah. know my feel is go as left as possible <laughs> you know so that why that's why for me like back in the days was just perfect in mm. terms of something nostalgic something that paid dues to the kind of of um soulful hip-hop that i loved because yeah. i mean ahmad back in the days yeah. was a joint that i loved mm. you know and was probably even amplified even more by um that film, The Wood, yeah, yeah. Uh, from that era, you know, and yeah, they right. had that, like, running through the, the that uh, whole film. Was the jamming in the film is okay? It was, yeah, it was, you know, and, like, that was such a cult classic for me. Like, it was such a, a great coming-of-age story, which I think, you know, fit into, I've, the, the, the transition I could feel I was already starting to experience, yeah. going from, like, you know, a boy to, you know, um, young adulthood, yeah. you know? Especially yeah. out on your own. Yeah, exactly. In a city like Joba. Exactly, man. exactly. But Octave could play with the, with, with, with the right ones. I mean, yeah, what they were like you brothers. Like Don, I mean, yeah, I Don. talk to Don on the thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More, more. Listen. I think he's in Kenya. I don't know if he's moved. Nah, but I think he's still in SA. I mean, look, you know, with me and Don, it's crazy because like, he was like the the young brother I never had almost because mm. we're like same exact age and everything. And yeah. um Again, it was one of those where he also, as a producer, was kind of like a young guy in uh, already mature shoes, yeah. already having achieved some Can things you tell in the people industry. A little bit about what he was doing um, at the time yeah, when we met him. Like Don Juan was already like you know building uh, a, a super production collective in terms of Octave Couple, because mm. how Octave Couple worked, you know, 
kind of just like what Ivy League, it was like a collection of different producers coming okay. together. You know, like I think at the time it was it was a very popular thing, you know, to have production crews. Yeah, you know no, what I mean. No, D D and the 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 hit boys. You know what I yeah. mean? Exactly. You yeah. know, that's how a lot of dudes were moving. And you know, you had originally it was him and Beijing Shaolin. Mm-hmm. They came from Cape Town together. Um, you know, and yeah, they just started landing on a lot of different types of tracks, you know, and, mm. you know, from new upcoming artists that they were working with, like Tamasha, mm. you know, to, to seasoned established acts that they were able to produce, you know, like, geez, like Bo Pro Kid, mm. you know, um, and yeah, the collective just kept growing, you know, PH Raw X at one point was in the mix, yeah. uh, later on, uh, Ross, the producer who Ross. became like right hand man you know um geez like (laughs) i I know i'm leaving out a couple of people but yeah i mean geez uh ab crazy at one point you know i mean how could i forget you know um you know and and they just were churning out incredible music yeah they were churning out like a, a bunch of bangers you know like across the board how about even the um, sound like itself like if you listen to Lona back in the days yeah it's not even close to like some of the stuff that i've also heard them Oh um, yeah, uh, uh, do for you. Yeah, back in the days, also because like you know how to pick out a track because of your extensive, yeah, you know your palette is sure. in a lot of different spots in it. You sure. know what I mean. So you're able to see how this can work in hip hop and also, yes. With, but these dudes, as far as production, yeah, Galen is a lot of components. as like all the other tracks that they've put out. Like oh yeah, they they are tight. Like you know, the the thing that I've been in awe of the more that I look back, you know, um, especially coming to appreciate sample. Yeah. Um, and sampling just as as an art form because yeah. I think sometimes you know funny enough you know we have these conversations all the time yeah. um, you know has, you know there's sometimes the feel that it's it's a lazy cop out but <laughs> but if it's done properly you yeah. know there's it's it's high art you know and yeah. I think there's a power in kind of giving people you know music that is familiar mm. but also moves forward yeah. you know um, yeah. When I think back to songs like I'm Out My Mind, you yeah. know, um, that's Aretha Franklin, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, you know. And if, if yeah, that's heavy crate digging, like, you know, and Ross was chopping up on MPC. That's why a lot of those those songs really sound like Pete Rock and, and yeah. you know, like, because that's the school that he, he he's about. Jay Dilla, he's like, he's a Jay Dilla uh, baby, you know. Now that you mention so, it, yeah. Um, you guys <laughs> um, got uh, album of the year. For, well, it was nominated mm. for album of the year on the MTN Hype Magazine Hip Hop Awards in yeah. South Africa. Dog, this is your first year in. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's wild because my first year in Imagination was nominated for best reggae dance hall for the for Channel, Channel O's. O's. Yes, yeah. <laughs> then you guys scooped and that though. No, we didn't. You didn't scoop that we one. didn't. You won the best sound then for no, Gijima. That was that was yeah. My first one was Gijima the following year for best mm. hip hop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I was I was really blessed. I think to get acknowledgement from Jump, and I mean, again, you know, Shike shot an incredible video, which mm. obviously was able to compete in terms of international airwaves so that's you how know. You know, the, the hot magazine hip hop awards was able to acknowledge um freshly baked as um, a nominee for I album mean, of the year w- remember you Gijima, got Gijima, Gijima and was a single from freshly baked yeah. so i mean it did it did incredibly well i mean not just as uh a, um or a video single but even as a radio single i mean it topped the hot nine at nine on yfm you know c live broke it on on that platform yeah so yeah it it really it really had a great push you know. I mean, imagination did win in 2009 though i get no nah, imagination was just nominated it was re- best Channel reggae dance hall yeah for best oh, reggae okay. dance hall. it was just a nomination I, i'm trying to get yeah. through your name this 2009 era yeah uh, get all 2008 yeah. would you say that was your breakthrough year as yeah for sure as oh no SA for sure now and like yeah. people getting to know who you are for sure i mean first and foremost just being able to be at you know those first channel Low awards um imagination was the first time i got to perform uh at big brother yeah you know first performance out the country you know um so yeah it really was a breakthrough year so really you think was. imagination is your breakthrough track no, like, for sure i mean not just in botswana but even even um in in i'd say maybe not less not more south africa but continental period i mean it's just it's so funny that the the continental media 
you know hub has also been south africa so <laughs> some of these things were happening in sa yeah. but the flavor was speaking more to the rest of the continent and feeding you know to that culture you know yeah, yeah. do you think like uh, all of these moves were intentional or were you shocked at every single turn? Hey, man, you know, like they say, you know, you 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 do your best and God does the rest. You yeah. know, like I'd definitely be lying if I said I saw that whole trajectory. Nah, I mean, you, you can only do so much and a lot of it is outside of our control, you know. And at this point, how did you start getting shows, um, gigs and stuff? Yeah. Uh, because I know you're all about your business as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you have yeah. management at the very beginning? At that or how, how were you able to move uh, and be creative yeah. and also go to school? Yeah. Jeez, I, that's when I'm trying to figure it all out, you know, in terms of like working, going from knowing people in production circles to, you know, trying to figure out the business lanes, you know. Mm. Um, I remember I got a chance to to do something around uh, MTN Exploded, and that's how I met uh, Bradley Williams for the first time, uh, DJ Bionic. Okay. You know, so yeah, guys like that, you know, seeing how they were moving, you know. Um, and one thing I think we kind of figured out with Don and them was, you know what, we, we have to be our own, um, solution providers, mm. you know, because the truth of the matter was everybody was busy with their own thing. You yeah. know, we tried to meet a couple of different managers and nobody really had time for us. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and yeah, that's when we decided, well, okay, let's figure out turning Octave Coup Play into a management team as well, mm -hmm. you know, and then working in partnership with DIY, you okay. know. So, so setting up, I mean, Botswana was relatively easy because you know, I'd already started to kind of break through, you know, having had initial support, yeah, yeah, forensic okay. and that team. Um, and yeah, just essentially trying to, to duplicate some of that for for South Africa, you know, I mean, having had uh, rocks and, you know, the big dog um, a team as well at one point. The big dog, that's DJ Fresh's um, yeah, label. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, rocks was working with that, essentially heading that in Botswana. Okay. I remember when they came, they would, they'd signed a couple of acts, but Mr. O. Okay, yeah. Rox is um, DJ Fresh's younger brother. Yeah, for um, those who don't know. For those yeah. who don't know, he yeah. owned a, lab, um, a company. What do we call it? It's called mm. Reason Entertainment. Mm. Him and Quag D. Him and Quag D. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th these are like some, yo, some really innovative young brothers. Oh, yeah. Out in SA, still doing that thing. Mm. Um, I mean, for those who don't know Quag, he was also part of pr producing and shooting some of some yep. iconic videos. Yeah, including in Gijima. He shot yeah. Gijima as well. He produced that. Nick Rue shot that because he was working a lot with Nick. Yeah. And um, essentially, that one was a hustle, man. Like, I think they were shooting an ad that weekend. Yeah. And they were just like, yo, man, we got equipment. Let's let's do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was to see, like, yeah, you know. But it's just crazy. But um, in December of 2009, you released your second album. So this is after you and the guys... Have yeah, come together and said, "Yo, we're gonna do this ourselves. We're gonna do Octave Could Play as a management a team." Yeah. But also between, um, well, the distribution was by Soul Candy Records. Yeah, and uh, the this flip was a partnership side. between DIY yeah. Reason, uh, Octave Could Play, yeah. and Big Dog Productions. Yeah, four entities. Yeah, it was wild. I mean, we were really trying to to you know unlock so much in terms of building a value chain. How you know? do you lock that down? Like. Who's running in between all of this yeah. while you're going to school? Dog. Yeah, man, it was it was a lot of partnerships. Yeah, that you're right. It was hard to sometimes manage all the moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we we did pretty okay in terms of having some clarity. I mean, the one major thing was that Soul Candy was a bit of a, a big gamble because they'd never pushed the hip hop project. The all house. Huh? Yeah, yeah. At the time, like you know, the hip hop thing was a bit of an experiment. It's funny because I remember I performed. Um, I opened for Mikasa one time and Jay something said to me how, you know, it's wild because I used to see your CD all the time at Soul Candy yeah. um, <laughs> when he was like essentially uh, uh, interning his way up. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, that was quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> like, yeah, because, cause, you know, they came up initially under Soul Candy yeah. as well, you know. Yeah, so, Dr. Duda. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, but but it was a, it was quite a successful 
um, experiment in some ways when I think about you know the success of joints like uh, Champagne Music. Champagne Music. You know that that was huge. I feel like we we climbed up another level that with that video. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That video didn't look like it was made here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, champagne music. Somebody, somebody said to me one time, man, were you guys in New York? Like, Nigga, <laughs> Emma. Uh, Miss Warriors, It was epic, right? It was epic. Um, that um, album had a lot going on. In yeah. There. How did you guys Shout do champagne music, though? Yeah, that you was... got a nomination for Most Gifted Male Video yeah. Against... Banky W, dog. Sure. Banky W signed whiskey. Oh yeah, uh, he signed whiskey. whiskey. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one day, Cole was yeah. in the same label as uh, the yeah, at the time. Coco Master. Coco Master. <laughs> there yeah. was Black Kofi. He had Juju. Yeah. With Zig Spantini. Yeah. And um, yeah, and Kanan <laughs> with uh, This Is Africa. Th- these are That's the nominations. Ridiculous. Like they, oh, yeah, like they had me buried. Didn't yeah. <laughs> no, it was over. <laughs> but no, but it's, it's wonderful to be able to see such kinds of things in hindsight. I haven't even thought about that category. Bandy Cole, Banky W, As Black well. Coffee, yeah. and <laughs> K9. Yeah. I'll never the guy forget who did her. the whole World Cup track. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's like, yo. And here's a guy from Little Old Botswana. Oh, yeah. That's why I always say, I mean, for me, when people want to talk like, oh, man, you guys, you know, um, you, you you didn't do this or didn't do that i'm like man listen like for for the kids who were literally writing raps in their bedrooms and kicking them under their breath you know i think we've we've really been able to to you know satisfy a lot of career ambitions i want to i want to talk about a little bit about bonemba when you get into these auditoriums yeah yeah, and you've been nominated for best gifted. Yeah. I don't want to take it all the way back to <laughs> I want to talk mm. about now because now you are an actual. Sure. Yeah, actually. No, but this is But you know, oh, I thought you meant like now, now isn't for this year's no, nominations for like Yamas and stuff. You got it. Yeah, yeah, that's also one question. Sure. Can you explain to these people? How, what what do you see when you get there as far as like ni- the Nigerians, sure, the South Africans, sure, the DRCs, yeah, and sure, dog from suit to the car outside, oh yeah, to yeah. all of, sure. Look, I mean, you <laughs> see, you see value chain. I mean, first thing is this, um, you know, people think entourage is just status, you know, um, and yeah, I guess there's dumb music acts that move like that but you know in those spaces you find entourage as roles you know everybody yeah. is has got a role is doing something adding value there you know from um you know managers road managers business managers publicists you know um yeah, like you find that the units um are quite big and you rich know? yeah and quite rich <laughs> yes you know because you're literally looking at um a money making machine a, a mm. business that is moving with different parts you yeah. know i mean i'll never forget for instance um and every every award show every level is its own level you yeah. know so i remember those early channel old days but i remember one one big leap forward for me was um afrima you know <laughs> going to dallas and jesus like i didn't know guys like um diamond platinums you know, um, I didn't know techno. Like, we literally just met at the hotel and then, you know, we end up spending the afternoon, like, going to the mall and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? And, yeah, and I could tell, like, yeah, these guys move different. You know? <laughs> like, Dog, same time. Just, so, we were like, at, um, <laughs> I get it. Foster won uh, for Hot to Death, mm. best, best Southern Africa. Yeah. That's the first time I went to the Channel O Awards. Yeah. By the way, pause on Foster. Like, I feel like we, we don't give him the credit he deserves <laughs> like Fasta people tend to forget that he's the first guy to like open the doors he you won know? the first one yeah he won the first one and I mean for me as a as a top five uh, BW MC like I feel like he's the guy a lot of people forget on their list you know what I mean yeah but you're just his sister like oh my <laughs> oh, dude like you go, wow really <laughs> Wow, that was my girl. So, he, <laughs> he created a my bad, of my bad. It's okay, all love. Know, I have done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but love, love, love. Yeah. So shout out, shout out, shout Mr. Out Doe, man. Piano. Yeah. No, he took me there, um, like uh, to back him up. He was mm. performing hard to death. Yeah. I don't want the devil's rest. Talk. And then they were what are it's one of those trips where you have to go to the mall, <laughs> yes, and um, and hang out. And you know, I'm I don't even have dough, man. Mm. You know, I'm gonna use PDM, yeah, 
for whatever I can buy there. Yeah. I didn't even buy anything. Yeah. Those Nigerian guys got mad yeah. when it was time to go back to the hotel. Yeah. But we're not kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And we're with Buddy Barnes and yeah. all of these niggas. You know what them niggas did? Yeah. They just hired uh, Mercedes Benzers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, courtesy cars. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you are not going to make us go back to the hotel now? Oh, yeah. You should have seen us get back into the shuttle. Little <laughs> bad. <laughs> 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 nah. <laughs> Nigga, we went back. <laughs> we thought, I think that's where we assessed our lives. <laughs> I think that's where Foster's like, I'm going to continue this chartered ar- architecture, <laughs> architecture <shit."> business. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good. gonna be done like this. Nah, for real. I think people just don't understand. Like it's it's a whole other level. It's a, it's whole, a whole, and how whole other level. There, though. Yeah. Look, I mean, this is the the part where people need to realize how we've we've literally won against the odds throughout our lives, you yeah. know. And you know, when I look at it now, um, and I see the fact that you know you've still got people like Bon Pussy Bina, you know, God. cutting through, fighting tooth and nail. You know, with I, no as much support as those other people. Do you know have what I'm saying? Compared to what I'm poor has, you know what I mean. Her, her people, but like you know, so so I think it's just a question of what, like, yo, um, you know, the powers that be that really get it. It's mm. time to to really unlock uh, uh, um, the power of you know local economy yeah. because you know I remember seeing um, what's my dude name um, Oleku. Uh, Ice Prince, Ice Prince yeah. you know, t- on CNBC Africa, talk about how, you know, th- the reality is for him to be able to make certain moves, you know, he needed capital from his local economy, like serious capital injection. So when they were doing the telco deals that were putting them, you know, now in, in seven figure bracket, cool. you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those type of deals. I mean, your vest will say the same thing, even yeah. with from telco to other products mm. that essentially put you in a space now where you can truly invest in other things, yeah. you know, and can truly diversify the portfolio and, you know, really go out there and, and challenge, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, it, it takes a lot, you know what I mean? I mean, people should look what, what is happening. I mean, guys like Mr. Easy, you mm-hmm. know, and the venture capitalist moves, yeah. you know what I mean? Again, Going global, Nas again, VC moves. Camille near, oof, you know what I mean. He's Nigerian, I think. You know, in, so in pe- people need to see what, like, you know, it's it's about you know our business communities, you know, Do we public only have private sector, all of them really understanding what it means to to rally behind our brands, telling what it can create new space for us. You know what I mean. Do you think we only have influence to offer? No, because not at of all. popularity. No, no, no. I mean, the catch is social capital, you know, can always be monetized. You know, the, the reason why we seem to be, you know, showing more social capital as value is because we haven't developed the rest of the chain, you know, that really allows us to turn all that goodwill, all these likes, all these views, all this uh, following, you know, all yeah. this influence into, you know, real economy, you yeah. know, because I always say, for instance, on a skit show level, mm. um, when I look at guys like William, you know, who's done incredible, you know, yeah. who to me, I think is, you know, the next guy to truly, you know, pick up the baton and ensure we're still visible, you know, mm. uh, years later on, yeah. on an international award show level, on a international media, popular culture level, yeah. you know, um, but there's a trajectory that's kind of missing in terms of when you look at like uh, a Issa Rae, mm. how they went from, you know, Script the writing. Vines and yeah. those viral clips, you know, and the Quintas yeah. to developing sitcoms. Writing whole Emmy award yeah. winning sitcoms, sitcoms and yeah. building series, you know, the Abbott Elementaries and yeah. all of that, you know. Yeah. Um, the Insecures, you know. Yeah. So that's Issa Rae again. Yeah, that's yeah. Issa Rae. You know, yeah. the other one is Quinta. And when you look at, again, that trajectory, where still not getting it right you know so these are the type of things think about on what okay until we we connect the dots along those lines you know i know you knock on doors oh for sure um as far as i don't want to talk administrations mm. but I, I say there's a change now because there's a couple of people who've been in business mm. and now are in government most of them i don't know if it trickles down yeah. or no, they call them technocrats, I guess. Yes. Hey, 
with the advent of like technocrats all mm. over our our cabinets and all of that shit, mm. we'd assume mm. that niggas know something about business and how to align certain things like that. Yeah. I don't knock on as many doors as you. <laughs> Tell me. You know, ah, it's interesting because I think, you know, cultural spaces are always unique and they're always very, you know, non-linear. They're not based on textbooks yeah. you know and get out of music and entertainment are definitely you know b- driven by culture yeah. so we tell lower it just because it's in his gala for you know a uh, media mm. or for you know Love. whatever right yeah. um whatever technical space if you don't really understand the culture you know and subcultures you know and nuances mm. of those spaces you know, it's hard for you to be effective, you know, because you, you'll you be moving in a way Elongore is not, um, you know, congruent with how the culture moves, yeah. you know. So so you tend to find what, like, I'll give you an example, for instance, with um, promoting events, right? Yeah. You know, most times with corporates or, you know, public sector initiatives, they'll they'll do a lot in the way of the kind of channels they look at in terms mm-hmm. of promoting yeah. but one simple one that they often overlook is that corner um banner yeah. it's from ways uh, the white banner city paint with blue and red right like okay. the the old school one and i always say yeah i get it it's not always appealing <laughs> in terms of oh, aesthetic right. yeah those gonna banners yeah hey, all the four tigers the, corners hey, yeah those banners tiger. right hey. Um, those ones will get you more people than the Facebook than, posts. Than many posts, than many platforms, yeah. right? Because that's just the, the, the nuances of our of our local oh, that's scene, how we right? Are. Yeah. yeah. And I always say, look, if Franco anything... still bagging, sorry. Do you see what I'm saying? Hey. If anything, you know, figure out how you step them up and whatever, you know, package them nicely to be, you know, in line with your brand or whatever. Yeah. But understanding those types of things versus just... You know, a great media plan theory. Yeah. trickles down to to You know what I mean? Yeah. These these are the things I think make a vast difference. So more than anything, guys should humble themselves. You know, engage with um, you know cultural uh, creators, curators, custodians. You yeah. know, like listen to them. You know, when you're talking uh, policy development, when you're talking your your planning and you know strategy development and stuff you yeah. know engage with us don't let us be an afterthought you know what i mean yeah build us into your budgets you know uh, engage with us so you understand how value works you know I what i mean i think they don't think experience as strata is as important as experience yeah or anything to get back good idea and because like <clears throat> if you were to ask easy b yeah for a rollout of yeah. like whatever mindset changes mm. nigga Brian is going to get that message there. He may not talk it in the same language. Yeah. But he knows what's good for yeah. how, how to localize content for Botswana. So much so that he's able to get even people with one track yeah. to come and fill up a whole place. So <laughs> if, a, if a person is able to do that, <laughs> yeah. what would he do for your your marketing campaign? Yeah. yeah. But just yeah, no, do you think Yano yeah, is the disconnect between the so-called professionals and the so-called hustlers. One hundred percent. And and go ahead, this is where you see again the lack of development in our value chain. You know, you'll find, for instance, corporates will try speak to demographics by long order they in all honesty don't understand okay. and they want to skip the bridges that are there sometimes even competing with those bridges i mean i've talked for instance about the jam for brunch experience yeah where, we're where, where you're creating a certain kind of culture a certain kind of audience you know yeah. and you're carefully creating and building this yeah. you know but instead of you know um unlocking that with you and developing that with you mm. they would rather come in you know a, a culture vault you know yeah so these are the type of things then what i think once we start really respecting each other and acknowledging each other's value you know changes everything okay pa um out of all of the things that i would ever thought you to do mm-hmm. i never in my wildest dream ever thought you would ever be a big brother house a housemate <laughs> yeah um <laughs> you know and 
funny enough, you were actually like one of the the, the, the favorites <laughs> in, in the house. Yeah. First of all, how did it start off? How did you put it? You together? know, first thing is it wasn't even on my radar. Yeah. Um, it was literally uh, Tapoma Panyan who was um, working with Multi Choice, and I think that was one of the productions she was close to at the time. Who was yeah. like, "Yo, I really think you should audition for this." Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, I I did it really to to you know. Um, go with the suggestion yeah a client you know was very supportive because <laughs> yeah. you know already with the channel o's and having done performed at big brother you yeah. know there was there was a, a relationship that was growing with um you know the dstv botswana team multi-choice botswana team you know yeah so yeah that that was really why i went to the audition i really didn't give it a lot of thought like <laughs> well, <laughs> i was shocked next thing i'm making it through the the rounds and then it's becoming real and real <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing is like you go to Joburg for for the test whatever's before yeah and yeah and geez <laughs> that's how it happened but um I'm thankful it did because to me it was my first major pan african education i feel mm -hmm. you know um outside of university because monash was was a wonderful school in terms of having you know different uh, um young africans from different countries yeah but i don't think i'd ever lived with you know that many <laughs> uh african cultures you know and african personalities and i've always <laughs> wanted to know or know what like <laughs> africa can I uh, you know, deodorant doesn't mean the same wow. thing to all of us. So, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, no, I've been there. I've been in the continent. <laughs> wow. So, that, how, wow. Uh, one thing, because no. my mom and my sister love that show so much, mm. man, and they watch it a lot. The one thing that I always wonder is, does it smell Look, dope? You know, here's the thing. First thing, You're that, gonna tell that me culture <laughs> thing. No, I'll, I'll tell you this. Like, it seems like I came to learn this even too, you know. Apparently, there's places, for instance, where it's seen as um, feminine to use Dio, right? That's exactly what oh, I'm telling you. Hey. So, We're and, 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 and it's not even, it's not even you, you don't find it's widespread like across country or whatever. I mean, yeah. you might find even in Botswana, there's places where guys are so hardcore. They that are. They feel like, you know what I mean? That's the absolute <laughs> toxic, most toxic masculinity of all time. <laughs> you know, where you, where you gang banging on Dio, wow, bro. You know? Right <laughs> hey, you know? You know? So, so, um, <laughs> You know, the, the, such stereotypes are horrible. You know, uh, like my Africa house smells was just fine. Okay. Come on, my Africa. You know, like we we are more the same than anything else in terms of the popular culture that unites us. You know, so you find what a contemporary African citizens won't carry those types of beliefs. I but you know the Jenny you know Fox I mean? joke, right? Yeah, no, no and, and, and I, it, it was right here. So that's what usually when people go, <laughs> I really, yeah, no, it's horrible, I man. It Look, thick. it's horrible. Now I've been to a lot of different places and, you know, just like the same here, Mubutwana, you know, it, if you go on the wrong bus at the wrong <laughs> time, you will catch for heat. You know what I mean? Hello. You know, <laughs> so, so it's less really about where you are in yeah. terms of country per se, but more, um, you know, haikiturankare, <laughs> you know, location in terms of the demographics, you know. People will kill me if I don't ask you about that lady who was following you around the house. <laughs> yeah. Um, Karen. Yeah. Um, she couldn't get enough. Yeah. She just couldn't get enough. And the thing Look, is, she was so raw to everyone else. Yeah. But for you, like somehow she was being in, like, mm, uh, please. <laughs> oh. I don't know. It's, How was it up close, like having yeah. someone in your space like that? Because yeah. it was bordering on GBV. <laughs> you know, I, it's, I don't know, man. It's, um, it was one of those things where I think there was, there was, you know what's the show and you know the the i don't know if to say the script of it because i could see even the edit of it coming outside yeah. was was you know following a particular narrative yeah you know versus i think the you know the chill of it which was just you know um somebody who i think you know as much as they came across as maybe as uncouth or you know <laughs> like a bit raw like was pretty genuine and authentic and understandable you yeah. know what i mean so yeah i think maybe that was the reason why she she felt some kind of connection because she understood that you know um i was able to get her you yeah. know maybe yeah. more than other people you know why do you think like when do you think um but on tv 
not the actual television station, but like mm. us here will understand that um, reality TV is scripted. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because like, I think at this point in time, niggas is just saying, yo, we'll pay the cameras, do. <laughs> Look, it's here's what, what it is. I think, th- like for instance, with Big Brother, I'd be lying if I was to say we were given scripts. No, no, no. It wasn't scripted like that, right? Yeah, no. Um, no, I can't tell you how... I felt like what I was doing was scripted. Yes, but I yes, could tell yes. Because yeah. I could see how my star was getting it wrong. Yeah, God, it just it in a weird way it feels like there's like these narratives Tselongore will be loosely built and hey. the edit kind of weaves around. Around you know, that, that's yeah. why I get it. Like for me, especially coming out when I saw the Sunday show and how it was edited, like that's that's the one that made me like feel like oh okay whoa. They dial up certain things, yeah. you know, um, maybe dial down others, you yeah. know. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I guess, th- it's it's an understanding of the entertainment landscape, right? Yes, People, sir. I think, sometimes need to understand. It's just like with, with film and TV yeah. and biographies. Yeah. You know, there's always the question of, or, you know, how real, how authentic is this? Like right now with Usha K. Lembe, you know, mm. there's the big raging debate. Or no, this is fiction this is not true this is and the reality go to even clean, man but the reality <laughs> is this if, even with you know uh historical accuracy as as a north star when you delve into the realm of narrative certain yeah. things are dialed up others are dialed down and you know certain audience uh, um emotional cues are targeted you yeah. know what i mean yeah. um certain certain things are looked for be it scandal be it drama be it you know those emotional plot points yeah. love hate jealousy whatever you know treachery yeah. you know so it's it's um unfair i think to expect that, you know, what you see is just objective. I mean, it's been proven now what it, to, a, to a large extent, even with news media, yeah. the, the voice of the journalist, the voice of the, the, the media house cuts yeah. through. You know what I mean? So It's about who's telling the story. Do you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. Kanye now with the Vic Tag, it tells the story. So see what I'm saying. I feel that yeah. completely. So all we can do, I think, is try to find as many versions of the story to try get to some sense of a whole picture. They're know? gonna kill me if I keep going more and more. So I'm yeah. gonna run through some of these okay. these questions. Yeah. Um. Just so I can, and some of these ones are not the ones from the prep. Mm-hmm. Um, I want. I'm gonna talk about African time sure. for a particular reason, but not right now. I want to talk about. Actually, you know what? Let me ask about. Uh, African time. It came out on uh, in December 2013. Yeah, and uh, this is your third album, mm. and uh, it's the most commercially successful. Yeah, how did you guys enough. sell it? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because a lot of my core fans hated African time. <laughs> like, serious. Like a lot Come of my on, core friends. Come on, there is a uh, psych. I, I loved know. psych. Big up, big up. Africa, big up. My hotel at Queens, big up. There's Quella Man. Hey, oh, Quella Man, can I'm hotel at Queens? Oh. Yeah, there's my Africa, Africa, and then there's Quella Man. I think yeah. people got mad is... because of my Africa. No, but a lot of people loved my Africa. No, um, older people like my Africa. Yes, people yes. felt yes. after champagne music. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, true. They wanted more jiggy, more hey. poppy. I know. Um, you know, the crazy thing about it is, you know. <sighs> For me, it's it was like musically speaking, that's my life's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it's the culmination of coming from Big Brother and having those Pan African experiences. Mm. You know, uh, oh, right after Big Brother, I had I had I got the chance to travel. You know, went to places like Malawi, Kenya. Yeah. You know, um, well Tanzania, I think I'd gone even before. Mm. You know, so you know, even essay, I got to to move around more. You yeah. know, I remember one tour. Um, little project thing that led me to like you know even rural back uh, corners of SA you mm-hmm. know and it really showed me you know life I think in a way that I I never anticipated and then later on you know being able to 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 start traveling um you know across the world you know yeah. going now to brother states and stuff and then seeing another chapter of of you know pan africanism and those different types of connections you know so yeah. it it's it i think it was a natural evolution that was coming and something that kind of like 
was a gateway that I needed to to go through yeah. in terms of understanding myself as an African and other Africans around me, yeah. you know, before even getting a chance to to speak to, you know, um, diaspora yeah, energies, you know. So, yeah. I incredible. absolutely love that. Thank you. Because that's where we actually got to hear you um, bag the biggest feature mm. in in... BW hip hop history, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, this is the biggest feature. Bless you up. know, uh, you were able to get Stogie T and AKA on a man. track. Bless up, Mona. R.I.P. Mega. All yeah. right, you have to take us through how you guys made this happen. Yeah, man, that song. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys want the story. I need to know about this track. Much yeah. <laughs> The story is is crazy because it was like a lot of you know a series of fortunate events in terms of timing. Yeah. Um, first thing was I'd done this freestyle over Common, uh, the Sixth Sense, mm -hmm. and then I put it up on SoundCloud and I tweeted it. And one of the people who responded to it was uh, Dumi Stogie. Yeah, and you know when he showed it love i was like man i'm gonna take the chance to to send him something, you know, and sent him the joint. You know, he didn't even hesitate, like, you know, send back something quick, fast. Um, and then originally, crazy enough, it was supposed to just be me and him. We actually mm. had a third verse, which was a back and forth yeah. between me and him. And then it just so happened that when we started talking about doing the video, um, again, Quack D was in the mix. Yeah. Um, he was shooting with Nick. They were shooting AKA's Jealousy video. Mm -hmm. Jealousy? We were, yeah. A lot of people don't know the Quack guys. We're going to have to put up a oh, picture man. of Quack D. Okay? Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Quack, Little No More Hunger, Kuli yeah. Chana. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, geez. Basically, Molotov cocktail. And Molotov, Molotov cocktail. cocktail has a great footprint. I saw him across. last year at a wedding. Yeah. Uh, Yaga Yao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was the, it was the only person who could get him back in the country was Yao. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, I want to fast forward a little bit to AK and sure. like your relationship with him yeah i mean early days you know um i think it was just like literally everybody on the come up kind of thing everybody trying to prove themselves you know and i think interestingly enough that's what's up you know for him came at a point where i think you know there was still a bit of doubt or people trying to throw doubt in lyricism. some of the hip-hop circles around his lyricism and you know yeah. And, you know, the way he came on that joint and just knocked that out the park, you know, I think was was just proof, um, you know, to his abilities. Yeah. Like that he he really was that kind of chameleon MC. Did who he can the verses first, though? Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> One, because he did. And, and I mean, man, he like I literally remember the, the funny thing was <laughs> him wanting uh wings like mm. yeah we, we got to the studio he listened to the thing and he's like yeah this on point this on point um and he's like yeah i want to start writing but i'm hungry and he wanted wings yeah. like <laughs> get the men the wings man yeah so so expeditiously <laughs> wings arrived you know and yeah the the, the wings gave him wings yeah. like forget the red bull you know right peace because yeah man and he, he chopped up that verse so beautifully and yeah rest is history it's funny because i always feel like the, what he went through on that song it's kind of like what Les went through on um, on All Eyes on Me. Because I feel like he had the hardest job ever yeah. coming in after all of those dope verses. Now this was for the days. To end it up, and, then he, and he stepped in and he hit yeah, it out the park. Out, you know yeah. what I mean? So after it's, Burner Boy and AKA, now that you think and about JR, it. And JR. JR was killing that joint. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so it's something major for me when when somebody comes in and like has the last verse and yeah does the things. That is hip hop royalty right <laughs> there. Up. So, do you think that's why Casper didn't want to rhyme with you at Cliff Center? Oh come on, no man, <laughs> not at all. I mean, I'm we, no, come on, that's ridiculous. What you was know? going on in that studio? Because I have my own um, analogy of what was going I, on. I don't you know, man. To, now let me tell you what yeah. I think. Yeah, you were there to rap. Yeah, what was he doing? Look, I mean, look, first and foremost, it was always love with Cass from early. No, I have love for right? Cass. Like, um, even and, and I think... But I didn't you know, like what happened there. I think people, different people reacted differently to that thing, you know, to a point where it became such a big thing. I mean, I saw Katla Musa in the Motaku book wrote it like it was a battle, right? Everyone and, talks and about it like it was a battle. It I wasn't. It, it wasn't, really yeah. wasn't, right? I yeah. think, I mean, for me, it was just a question of like... Um, 
you know, the champ had an off day, you know what I mean? Like, and it happens off of the back of the fact that, you know what, as the champ, you know, there's a certain comfortability that you have, you know what I mean? I think, I don't think people nah. understand. No, wait, yeah. feel me. I don't think people understand. For a guy like Casper, there really hasn't been a lot to prove for the longest time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's funny with Solomon, it felt like, you know, there, there was an element of, you know, finally wanting to put the lyricism you know, thing to, 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 to rest, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that people can finally hear it for for what it is in terms of the fact that dude has, you know, a skilled pen. We've always known that. It's just, it, there's always been this thing, which like I say, maybe <laughs> times like that haven't always helped in terms of feeling maybe um, a bit too comfortable at a certain point. I mean, he gives respect that I can give him. Yeah, and a I appreciate lot of that. The time, I appreciate like, that. So him and TD, mad love to them, man. All like, the and time. that's why for me, it's always All love and respect to them too. You know what I mean? But I just and felt at that point in time, um, as much as like I know, we're not respected for a lot of BW people, myself mm. included, yourself included, mm. and I just felt good in that moment. You know, um, you, you're there. You're at an O'Neill spot. You're yeah. not gonna not rap. Sure. You know, we want O'Neill to to flourish. Yeah. You are on his thing, and you know how to rap it. Sure. And when it's all about like keyboard, it's still rap less than the key. Yeah. Look, like I say, come on, son. Like I say, he knows better than that, though. And I think you know when I learn element thing, and I ah lenyato. And that's why I'm saying, get it. Like, and he didn't you have know? to do all that because, like, at the end of it all, it then looks bad on you. And yeah. He, I think he's smart enough to know that. That's at that what moment. I say. Look, you know, for me, I think it it became a moment that like um helped elevate everyone in a lot of ways. No, wait, feel me. Because I'm sure that he went back and, you know, the the flack that you're giving him right yeah. now that some of the people, like, in comments and whatever were, were, were giving him, I think he came to appreciate one more. Like, you know, you always have to, even when you are the champ, mm. you know what it's like? I'll use basketball analogy. It's like, you know, you've already won several rings. Yeah. You've proved it all. Because let's, don't get it twist. Like, he's, he's, he's done won it. Everything. He's already won. He's, he's already done <laughs> everything. You yeah. know what I mean? He's already so won. He really doesn't need to prove anything. But when you hit the street ball court a lot of those dudes don't care that you've already got five rings yeah. from you know nba championships Blue league they, 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 yeah that's We're in there you see what i'm saying yeah. We're in <laughs> dudes there. want you to get rockers they, Come on. they Come want get this 50. they want you to go full on rocker park yeah. go on street ball mode you know what yeah. i mean yeah so so i think that's that's again one of the interesting things about this hip-hop culture or like how it can keep you on your toes you know what i mean no doubt yeah um on the other side of the coin a Reese has you uh, on his top five list. Man, humbled. Yeah, I heard really it on rap first as yeah. well. Now that's that's really humbling because, like, I mean, geez, for for somebody of his generation that's as gifted as he is, who's achieved all that he has, you know what I mean? It's mm. it's a really special shout out. Like, it means a lot to me that um, you know the the kids who I listen to, and I say kids with all due respect, you yeah. know, um, that have advanced you know, the, the pen game that have, you know, even moved the, the Sonics forward because yeah. I've always loved, you know, their understanding of not just the lyricism, but even, you know, the production of it all. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, how guys are willing to, to vibe on lo-fi and chill hop and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like proper backpacker energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Still I love rapping. it. I love it. It's, it's, um, it's really special to me. So yeah, like major props to the young king. Man. And he hasn't even just said it also on, on, on a record. He doubled yeah. down on an interview yeah. um, when they were launching uh, Revenge Club Records founded yeah. by A. Reese Ham mm. himself, J. Jody, who I think is amazing also. Word. Um, his bro. Uh, yeah. And, and TK and all of that. Um, all right. I want to talk about the business ventures because sure. we can't do two hours, but <laughs> the wifey is going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Jam for brunch. Sure. We all know what Jam for brunch meant to um, Sundays. Sure. In BW, it yeah. was the first. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. I. I, I Pioneers. Don't, I, I mean, I don't want to get into how it was made and all of that. For those who don't know about Jam for brunch, sure. Get on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, look for the Jam for brunch uh, page. Where? Um. Look up Jam for brunch on newspapers. Look. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real thing. Okay. Word. <laughs> um. When did you decide or no? 
Now these people are now jacking my idea <laughs> because now I know you. First know. and foremost, not <laughs> my idea. Basadi Di Bella no as founder idea. and yeah. then Zendile Ramelko as co-founder. Mm-hmm. You know, um, look, it's. <sighs> I think it's it's just it's the way the game goes. You know what I mean? Like we saw the market flood. Um, I think COVID law and obviously played a major part. You know, and what happened before COVID when corporates trying to do that oh, yeah, we, we, same we, we event? We had we we had that happening. I mean, geez, from corporates rushing the market, you know, to other SMMEs coming in with a similar offer, similar days. You know, and I think one thing that we we haven't understood well as Botswana is collaborative competition. I've spoken about it on different platforms, but I think we need to understand what whether a market which is niche, it's important for us to figure out what okay, how do you really spread out offerings to make it sustainable? Because mm. when we all flooded at the end of the day, you know, it it drives value down and the whole thing comes crashing after a while. You no know, wins. so exactly, mm. you know, so so yeah, I hope in the new era of you know, trying to bring it back. Um, you know, we're able to to find, you know, um, ourselves in a way that you know truly allows us again to keep setting ourselves apart. Mm-hmm. You know, um, not get caught in the mix of, you know, creating this homogenous offering. And what now? It's like everybody was kind of trying to create the same Everyone, thing. One dog. You know, um, and then obviously diversify because we've always been keen on on finding, you know. Um, spaces to to unlock in yeah. whether be it fast moving consumer goods space be it hospitality space yeah you know so yeah there's there's a lot to still leverage in that brand and i'm excited that people still are hungry for it mm. you know i mean i love the fact that you know uh booty cast has for you brought yeah. back such a, a legendary iconic brand that yeah. you know um was pioneering again in terms yeah. of merchandising out here so i'm just what am I doing? Yeah, you I'm know what I mean. On some what the hell? Listen, when he came back as a podcast, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and and that's the thing that that people don't realize half yeah. the time. What are there's so many things that you know come back in in different ways yeah. that that you know actually have an ultimate destination. Elon, what we're still just uh, you know detouring through. Definitely. You know? So yeah. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your relationship with uh, the U.S. Embassy. Mm-hmm. Um, my producer has gang questions. We sort of get it's like sure. Jesus, and he's telling me because I'm running a test, but I'll send the prep later. <laughs> How are you writing a test with like seven pages? <laughs> I know, right? Like um, the longest interview I've ever done for dude, sure. Dude, no, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. I want to talk about your relationship with the U.S. Embassy. Sure, You're one of the, the 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 people who the U.S. Embassy um, sent. Uh, well. This is how the the press release reads. Sure. Um, Hip hop legend uh, Hamizus Bansi is attending the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit, which is being held in Washington, USA. And the uh, U.S. is proud to send the Botswana Award winning creative legend uh, to Washington to attend your na- the Leaders Summit. What what? And then you're also a Mandela Washington uh, Fellowship Yalu alumni of yep. uh, 2016. Um, what does the U.S. want with us? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I've always wanted to ask someone to tell me. Listen, hey, Tato, go and be a Yali. What what is yeah. like? Look, what am I doing? Yeah, hey. it's interesting. <laughs> Look, um, I think I think it goes without saying. What there's definitely an extension of you know um, diplomatic relations. Elon yeah. is embedded in you know the development programs that we've had you know opportunity to access or at least you know um some of us have um it goes way back you know it's it's interesting that eventually i did the mandela washington fellowship um which was barack obama's uh, uh, brainchild you know um because his father was actually a beneficiary of such kinds of exchange programs well that's how we went you know out there or yeah, that's how his father went, went to the there. United States. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, it's it's really nothing new in mm. terms of, you know, a program like that. Mm. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity to learn about, you know, a vast kind of array of different things uh, a country like the U.S. has. Mm. Um based on such kinds of diplomatic exchanges, you know, and cultural exchanges. Yes, sir. Um, for me, I'd say the first uh, um, 
inception kind of um, point was the Get Up and Go project. Yeah, hey. All the way back then when we had the hip hop project that we, you were part of as well. Yes, sir. Elongware uh, spoke to, you know, sp- um, you know, challenging the drivers of HIV and AIDS via Rest in different peace songs. Lao Nasarai. Lao Nasarai, so exactly, man. Yeah. RIP, he was a, a fundamental part of that program. Yes, sir. Um, and, you know, it, it did wonders, I think, for me in terms of just, you know, showing me how hip hop, one, was a global language. Yes, sir to the power of you know uh, culture arts and entertainment and diplomacy mm. you know and how there's the opportunity to connect some of these dots you yeah, know yeah so yeah. by the time when i was getting nominated for the freemas mm. um not the first year but the second year i got nominated um yeah. i was like you know what maybe i should actually try and build on some of that stuff yeah. you know so i reached out to them to say yo i'll be in the states mm. um what can I do, you yeah. know, to learn, to grow, you know, as a individual, as a leader, you know? Yeah. And that's how I ended up getting the IVLP, the International Visitors Leadership Program. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a major program. I mean, yeah. I was shocked when I saw some of the people who've done it before, like yeah. a lot of presidents, you know. Um, I believe even our current president did that program back in the day. No doubt. Um, We're on the right road. <laughs> We're on the right road. So No, maybe you'll be the change we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, um, yeah, IVLP like mine was purely focused around social entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. You know, again, it's it's been wonderful to to have the opportunity to grow in ideas and spaces they long what aren't always you know the flavor of the month here. Yeah. So I think concepts like Bonobo social entrepreneurship haven't been you know really embraced here. You know, when people think about are you a business person or are you an NGO person? Mm, yeah. Well, no, th- most people don't think that you can actually be a combination of those two people. They feel or if you're making any type of money from doing any type of so- societal change, yeah. you are st- you're a bad you're guy. Yeah, you're, you're a problem. You're stealing. And the, the hilarious thing for me is always, okay, so we're happy with people making money by damaging society. So okay. so we're happy to, to, <laughs> to profit off of... Um, poison and mm. death and bad messages and what yeah. what right um would you, and by yeah, the way would you rather have that or have someone getting paid for making good I, stuff happen? i would be very happy to see the kids in my neighborhood and you know all over this country inspired to to um you know build sustainable enterprise by making positive change yeah, yeah. because that literally is a win-win because by the way you know social enterprise first and foremost already you know, takes away um, this obsession with, you know, profit by any means. Yeah, capitalism. Know, it, to a point, yeah. you know, you will destroy, you know, your environment, your communities, whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Social enterprise um, embraces the fact that, you know, for me to, to uh, be sustainable and grow, I have to be contributing sustainably and giving back to my communities you know definitely so so such kinds of concepts you know um they've been you know ahead of the curve with you mm. know and of course we understand as well there's an element of of um just the sale and what it, you know has to be addressed you know because yeah. it's not like you know the american government itself is perfect mm. you know the their history i think speaks a lot to to you know, a lot of social wrongs and ills, mm. you know, in addressing them, whether you're talking about addressing slavery, you know, or or um, sexism or, yeah. you know, bigotry and a lot of other forms, you know, which have been the cornerstone of white supremacy, which has been the cornerstone of, you know, the, the rise of the West. Yeah. You know, you'll find that there's an alternative narrative, eh, Longore, brings in you know a very you know exciting civil society you know starting with whenever the civil rights movement yeah. you know leading up to to you know the change we saw when a guy like barack obama became president you yeah. know yeah. so so yeah i think it's it's a a very um interesting uh, development relationship that i i can you know be a living case study for in terms of 
my engagement with the U.S. Embassy, and I'm I'm really um, thankful for all of the different things, you know, down to uh, the support that they gave us for the climate change and Botswana docu series. Yes, sir. You know, we we speak pitched. a little bit about that because yeah, like, you are into filmmaking now as yeah, well. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, how's I did that, that for post grad? Yeah, I yeah. did that as my post grad. After, actually, yes, after got, Botswana, you're accredited, Mukwe. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad what we've we've you know opened up to the power of curriculum, you know, in our schools. They what are really you know trying to advance our creative industry. You yeah, know? yeah. So yeah, I, I did that post grad. Um, you know, I always wanted to get the chance to to create content beyond just music. Yeah. So you know, I grew up very much into film and TV as much as I was into music. So yeah, yeah. It's it's been such a joy to be able to to bring things to life in that space as well. Yes, sir. Um, you know, with the climate change and Botswana docu series, I reached out to the Botswana Climate Change Network. What twenty nineteen. Um, with I the didn't concept. even know they existed until you think. <laughs> <laughs> No, go on the mindset change. You be proactive. Learn about what's going on. Yeah, um, it starts with me. <laughs> and yeah. I and I appreciate the fact that you know when you speak about something like that, what we're able to give them visibility, yeah. which is exactly the kind of thing that I've talked about. What you know. Um, we we're still talking STEM, yeah. whereas most of the world is talking uh, STEAM, mm. Streama. You know, and now including robotics. You know, ethics, no, religion. No, they too fast. But but that's the pace <laughs> of the world today. We just got into STEM, so, like Alban. Oh, but you know, one of the reasons why Kifila Horomibile Harisera achieve what we can with STEM is because we're leaving out artistic components. We're leaving out, you know, the the humanistic components. Tere like you know, art, mm. storytelling are able to bring along. You know, yeah. so it's been such a joy to see some of that um, space embrace us. Yeah. You know. Um, Basically, from from getting support, got a pilot with uh, Botswana Climate Change Network, pitched it to BTV. You know, was able to get a slot for season one on BTV One. So yeah, um, that's oh, been God. quite incredible. I mean, we won um, biggest milestone, winning uh, best research reporter at the National Research Excellence Awards. We got you know? boop, boop, so boop. yeah, it's been yeah. it's been such an exciting journey. We're looking forward to syndication now yeah. for season one, and then development of season two and three and all. Yeah. Awesome stuff. I want I want my top fives now. Sure, okay. Mm, top five BW hip hop. Okay. Dead or alive. Jeez, okay. Mm. Listen, I mean, my number one is always um, a nomad. It goes without saying. Mr. Mapine. Mapine, no doubt. Yeah. You know, number two, obviously, I place myself. Oh, you better. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no. but I'll be, I be I I'm not mad at anybody placing you at two. No, you know? <laughs> they better place me somewhere. <laughs> um, so we're at three right now, right? Yeah. Um, it's a it's a very hard toss up because <laughs> I always feel like Diablo for me um, comes in, you know, because of the the the. Um, linguistics as well what yeah. he's done with kalanga you know yeah. groundbreaking you know and yeah. people forget my man's had major impact in SA as well you know no, he was on a track with pitch black afro you know what when, i'm saying uh, ground south african hip-hop was actually on its way up exactly dj cleo leave quite to a little exactly. bit exactly to you come and put mean? bass on that exactly. track exactly exactly and and essentially you know they draped them in terms of uh, uh pulling a, a joint that he'd done already and then went into you the know what i mean side. yeah so you know that was major. Um, Number five is always. I hard gotta. Also. It's always hard, right? Um, I mentioned uh, um, the soprano earlier, Mr. Doe. But like, yo, very hard to to leave him out. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, Staga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in fact, who would easily make a case for higher up? Mm. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, already, already, I'm, I'm spilling over. I, 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 before, <laughs> I, because I never want to just keep you to the hip hop shit. Because I know yeah. how these narratives work. Sure, you know, you get into a building and they see or you wrapped at one point in your life, and people want to keep you yeah. in the same box. I want to go back to nigga when damn near forty. I want yeah. to get into yeah. some serious <laughs> shit as Word. well. Or I see you yeah. have more optimism yeah. about these conversations with. Um, the leaders in our mm. in our maybe government sure. and maybe you have you're more optimistic than I've known you to be. Yeah, what has changed? Look, I think one of the big things for me has just been, you know, figuring out that, you know, 
pessimism and frustration, you know, can get the best of you when yeah. that's all you see, you yeah. know. Whereas the more you focus on your own um, locus of control, kind of like Stephen Covey puts it, mm. you know, the more you are actually able to change things, you mm. know what I mean? So it stops being just about like, you know, letting your environment lead you, but yeah. you lead your environment, you yeah. know? I mean, I've seen that a lot with the climate change docuseries, how this is one of those topics that, let's be honest, you know, is not getting the kind of media coverage it deserves, especially oh, given any. of any, especially given like the the gravity of the, the you know, situation, you well, know? Let me hold you there. Yeah. What do you think about the people who think that, the people who started global warming yeah. should be the ones who are responsible oh, for absolutely. cutting down. They're right. More than Botswana opening up a coal mine. They are absolutely right. When so we should be allowed to open up a coal mine because we are way back. I here's, here's what it is. Hey. This There's a lot of differing, differing opinions on this, but the climate justice perspective for me is exactly anchored around that to say, okay, Africa is responsible for less than 5% of emissions throughout history. Yeah. You know, and essentially industrialists um, built up the economies, you know, and governments of these these uh, countries, you know, through industrialization, which has harmed the, the, the planet. So yeah. essentially the planet was put up for sale. Somebody made a profit, you yeah. know. So it's only right that when we, you know, address the situation and seek to redress some kind of, of balance, yeah. you know, that the, the biggest polluters, you know, foot the bill when it comes to um, paying for a transition. Because mm. if we're saying we're transitioning from fossil fuels to alternative energy, that can, you know, keep us, you know, just as productive as, yeah. you know, the industrialists were. Yeah. Then somebody has to to pay and for that deficit, Definitely. you know, to to invest in new energies and all of that. And by the way, it's not just going to be alternative energies. The truth of the matter is that an energy mix is what's going to carry us forward, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that still includes fossil fuels as we reduce them yeah. and shift to others. You can't just shut down one. And yes. try and start without leaving it's, gaps. It's feeling like that, but I think that's why your documentary is important. You see, these are yeah. the perspectives, Taylor. What I think you know have to be considered you know holistically yeah. you know so so it becomes a question of okay you know uh, um accountability yeah you know and like i say a, a, a just transition which allows for for you know uh, um developing nations to still tap into some of that resource but where they have the opportunity to leapfrog mm. you know because we can't do things the way they were done 200 years ago yeah. just because they were done like that 200 years ago if if it's cheaper now for you to invest in alternative energy you know and by the way just the economics of it you yeah. know some of this yeah. look at how when the fuel price goes up, mm. everything skyrockets, right? Yeah. From the food price, you know, everything to else. To the cues at the thing. <laughs> everything else, right? And I mean, right now when we're talking inflation, the biggest cause over the last couple is energy inflation. Yeah. So imagine if you're able to change the dynamics of the world market such that you're getting rid of that dependence on a volatile fossil fuel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And also create employment for Banabaro and Aguano. In Banabaro. new transitioning spaces. Definitely. So, there's there's a lot to be unlocked in these spaces, which I really feel like yo the the next industries are there, man. So Banaba and Lord are as educated, went to school. Yeah. What would you advise them? Because they're not getting jobs. Yeah. I was watching some guy talking about back in the day there used to be posters. Yeah. I know you are in like a school of a business. Yeah. <laughs> what would Things you tell that changed. like new yeah. graduates right now about Look, finding Finding your space so on, that a, you can on make a mindset money. level, I really feel like you know it's been said over and over that we need um, pioneers by and are going to trailblaze mm. and create new industries. I'm I'm not one who believes, for instance, that entrepreneurship is the answer for everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. But I do believe there's a lot of entrepreneurs by Longore haven't really been empowered to employ this country the way that they can. Uh -huh. You know, and if people are looking again from a macro level at, you know, creating a shift, what really, really is going to, you know, unlock new opportunities for Botswana. Yeah. You must think on a policy level or okay, 
you know, how are we transitioning? For instance, with a space like climate change, yeah. if, if you're looking at adaptation and mitigation solutions, mm. you know, new policy needs to speak to these yeah. so that we create these new opportunities. Yeah. Like, for instance, you know, I know energy is easy to pick on, but there's many other spaces. Mm. When we think of water, for instance, water management, mm. Are we harvesting enough water yeah. in a drought-stricken country? The droughts are getting worse. We've mm-hmm. gone from five, four-year cycles to two-year cycles and stuff. And it's just getting you know, hotter. It's getting, getting hotter. Like, oh, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We need to manage water better. Yeah. Are we creating great water harvesting solutions? Um, you know, our, our systems, infrastructure, when are you thinking about uh, road networks and, you know, uh, um, uh, ditches and... Uh, waterways and Waterways stuff, and all of that. Yeah. Are we creating efficient systems that are really capturing all of this? They're putting this back into use. Yeah. You know, um, you know, there's so many things yeah. when you think about from agriculture to mining, yeah. hold new opportunities for us. You know, um, all those kids graduating from Bobust, you know, Bobuan, all these mm. uh, innovative schools, you know, um, and of course, even the creative sector. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot that I think we haven't even really started to explore yeah. that that could, geez, create, change our lives, change our lives yeah. for the better, you know. Exactly. Um, we, we, we're we tired of being underemployed, yeah. you know, Um uh, the internship program, for instance, is yeah. one thing that I'd really hoped um, is addressed by this administration. You know what I yeah. mean? If not, hopefully the next, you know, yeah. because we've come to a point where I think we're satisfied with so little in yeah. terms of um, our potential. Yeah. You know, but it's more you know, yeah, I mean, and I say that with you know uh, um yes. some some understanding out okay in certain departments and certain spaces yes they are getting we can't fair all cook my fresh experience so. we can't all have two tables but you know yeah in in terms of really uh, uh unlocking bigger parts of the first economy yeah. you know we we we're still not quite getting there and i hope her, her, new graduates have that sense of mindset or look if i'm not an entrepreneur i'm partnering up with guys by uh, entrepreneurial yeah. you know um let's bring our entrepreneurship skills to to the fore so that you know even when we're working within organizations we're seeing more than just you know um the nine to five uh, uh dance along what we do without sometimes even looking at impact or effectiveness yeah, you know, just all. to protect our mortgages, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Yo, but I'm going to have to shut it down. Um, thank you so, so much for <laughs> hanging out with us. We're definitely going to have a part two. And uh, yo, 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 you're, so, you're someone we, we, you know, you might be younger than me, but you're like someone I look up to. I appreciate you, man. Because like you educate yourself a lot, man. And, Bless up. Um, you, you you try to get better at Bless everything up. that you put your hands on and uh, pause, uh, <laughs> but like even then, hey, Bless you up. never know. I appreciate you, you never bro. know. And uh, <laughs> cheers for coming through. Toast, man. And uh, yeah, thank you to everyone for <laughs> hanging out. It's been the Pudi cast. It's episode. goat season. It's goat season. Yeah, and you better vote. Like uh, uh, Yama, best hip hop, uh, best male single. Oh shit, goat yeah. goat. Goat goat. Yeah, man. How did you meet Booty on the track? Oh no, Koti was actually Prince. That's Royal DJ on the production. But Booty on the track hit me up on Twitter, and yeah, there's a bunch of the new material. Koti new is album. Prince. Yes, yes, Prince is deadly, man. Royal DJ. Prince Don't is play, now man. Ezra Neithling's manager. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. We should do something with dude. I like dude. I love dude. No, and he does. He did the yeah. podcast logo. Yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah. Dope. dope. Prince. Yeah. You do everything. We he see does you, boxing bro. tournaments. Yes. Yes. And I love that. Yeah. He does graphic. Yeah. <laughs> this one is dedicated to you, Papa. Yes, sir. Pretty Royal cast. DJ. We out, man. Peace. Deuces. Identities. Podcast with PSCA.